Hey, what's up? Welcome to Movie Dumpster Season 3, Episode 29. Today we're talking about Of Unknown Origin from 1983, directed by George P. Cosmatos. I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. I'm Connor the Radvocate Advocate McGraw. I'm Tony from Hack the Movies and sometimes Cinemassacre. Welcome to the dumpster. You know, in this country we kill them to get rid of them, but in some countries like the Philippines, they kill them because they have to, to eat them, because that's all there is. Stringy chicken. Stringy chicken? Yeah, that's what they say it tastes like, stringy chicken. And in some country, I don't know which one, they serve it as a delicacy, like chocolate-covered bees or caviar. A filthy rat on fine china. There's no accounting for taste, is there? In some places in Asia and India, they actually venerate them. They worship them. Can you imagine that? Priests set out bowls of honey and milk to pamper some animals. Only contribution is famine, sickness, and death. Vermin. So here we are again uh, we, with a returning guest. I think this is the first time uh, that we've had uh, the same person on twice in one season. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. I feel so honored. It's pretty impressive. We're, we're welcoming Tony from Tony Peluso from Hack the Movies again. He uh, he rang in our brand new season uh, this year with Pumpkinhead 2, and now he's back for some Peter Weller versus uh, Giant Rat goodness. Jesus Christ, I thought that was last year. <laughs> <laughs> like it though right i don't blame you this like oh my god january feels like it was five years ago <laughs> it really does oh my goodness it's two different fucking years man fuck me i don't remember if i talked about this on the show but uh when i had my birthday this year we all went to uh hibachi yeah i was there <laughs> yeah joe was there our friend cb smith was there we even posted a picture at the time but like i was talking to somebody i remember who my girlfriend or a friend about yeah you know we should go to my we should go to hibachi again when it's my birthday that was so fun last year and she was like that was this year i was like that was this year <laughs> what <laughs> I was like, "Oh fuck! <laughs> don't don't do this to me." Oh man. Uh, well, I'm glad to be back. Uh, what'd you call it? Jo- Joe's gonna be on an episode of my show. Oh, I'm excited. Yes, we we're, we're all, so I listen to this podcast all the time. You guys are welcome. Well, thank you, thank you. And you guys talked about Frankenstein Unbound so many goddamn times <laughs> that I had to do it on my show because I wanted an excuse to rewatch it. Uh, but no, after we record, Joe's like, "Oh, here's a list of movies we're doing," and he mentions. Of unknown origin, it's a movie with Peter Weller versus a rat. And I'm like, well, there we go. That's the one. (laughs) (laughs) How could you say no? Yeah. And by the way, I want to talk about real quick how I watched this today. So my allergies have been going fucking nuts. And my eyes been super dry. So I'm like half blind today. So I'm watching a VHS rip on a big 4K TV (laughs) while I'm half blind. And keep in mind, I had a real miserable, I was in pain all morning, and I'm watching the movie, and I'm like 10 minutes in, and I totally forgot why we were doing this movie. I'm like, (laughs) what the fuck is this movie about again? And I look up Giant Rat, I'm like, oh my god! (laughs) Get a little surprise for you. Yeah, I, uh, so I, I, in in not quite so similar, but... Uh, I watched this movie over the course of three sessions. Oh, it's one of those. On a grand total of about four hours of sleep. And, uh, like, last night I fell asleep watching it, and this morning I picked it back up, and I I had a similar feeling. I was like, what am I doing? (laughs) Yeah, you're trying to get that pyramid report done, right? I was at a bus stop, and I'm sitting there, I'm like, what day is it? (laughs) And I had to work today, I was covering a shift, and, like, I picked a little bit back up my lunch, and then, like, at some point during my lunch, I was like, again, I was like, what... Where do I live? What's happening? <laughs> what day is it? Is it Friday? You were hitting that J&B a little too hard, man. That's what I think. <laughs> yeah. Too many strongbows. Yeah. <laughs> you got your hand caught in a fucking rat trap and shit? I don't have enough strongbows. <laughs> did you Did you wake up in a tub with all your clothes on? Uh, That would have been uh, preferable, actually. <laughs> Eobar jumps down from the rafters, says hello. 
Come on, Dad, get up. Hello, you adorable sweet animal. Here's a yogurt treat because you're a fantastic little pet. <laughs> I mean, we've talked about it on the show pretty often, but in case this is somehow your first episode, Connor has a pet rat named Eobard. Yes. Yeah. So you can only imagine the thoughts probably running through his mind while watching this film that we're going to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Dude, there, there are some... Okay, so like obviously... There are such things as big, giant, mean-ass rats that can probably fuck you up in a one-on-one situation if you're not careful. New York City has rats that will terrify you. I mean, there's that one video of the rat dragging, like, a piece of pizza that's, like, four times the size of its body across the subway. Oh, pizza rat! Yeah. Pizza rat. Yeah, pizza rat. How could we ever forget? Samurai pizza rats? Okay. I saw a video recently. It was, uh, someone found a picture of, it was just, it was a video of, a, like, a dead rat by a dumpster. And then, like, from the bottom of this dumpster, from the, the abyss beneath it two big paws come out and drag it beneath the dumpster and then it's revealed that it was a larger rat <laughs> oh uh beneath the dumpster who was looking for a snack i i was gonna say maybe it was like monster in the closet because i put him at the bottom of the dumpster he's coming out for a little snack oh he could be yeah <laughs> you, don't, you never feed me <laughs> a bunch of newspaper starts flying out from underneath the fucking trash can <laughs> yeah <laughs> you just hear ah! <laughs> but uh but back to my point like uh so like this movie has some very outlandish presentations and claims about rats. Uh, and I'm just going to say that uh, uh, my pet is extremely sweet and is a people person and they're social. <laughs> um, and uh, if, if if for whatever reason you're a weird human being who saw this movie and was like, wow, that's what rats are. Newsflash, that's, that's not what they are. <laughs> I don't think anyone's being introduced to the concept of rats. <laughs> from this movie. But if you guys want to know, I just I just Googled it. And according to BBC, the uh, biggest rat on record is a Gambian pouched rat. Uh, it grows up to three feet long. Holy shit. Oh, my God. Uh, and weighs three pounds. Well, cap- a capybara is a, is a rodent, too, isn't it? Yeah. But that's not a rat. Well, so. sure. They don't count. <laughs> All right, we're just talking about rats. I mean, I would argue that this movie has the razorback of rats. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, you know what? It's, yeah, it's not just a rodent. It's it's of unknown origin, TM. So we don't know, you know. Yes. Yes. It's razor rat. Ra- <laughs> <laughs> it kind of is, right? It's, it's rats are back. Which would have been a better title. <laughs> Razor Rat, I would have seen that movie. I'm not going to lie, that's a pretty damn good name for it. A good alternate. Yeah, I want to talk a little bit about uh, Tony and what he does. Particularly, I'm going to let you talk in a second, but I just wanted to say congratulations on um, a releasing Hack of the Living Dead. Uh, and we talked about that on our final uh, Trick or Trash episode. Yes. You want to talk a little bit about that and what you do? Yes, well, you know, I love uh, George Romero, and uh, I really respected his vision. But every time I watch Night of the Living Dead, I'm like, why, why am I not in that movie? <laughs> <laughs> and then it occurs to me that, that movie was made, like the, I think, like when my mom was a toddler. So there, I couldn't physically couldn't be in the movie. Uh, luckily, the movie is in public domain. So I have uh, shot new scenes and digitally inserted myself and others into the original Night of the Living Dead. I've uh, kind of changed the narrative a little bit. So it's... Uh, I'm also at the at the cemetery visiting my dead friends, Justin and Kieran, <laughs> and I get stuck outside the house, and the characters from the movie won't let me in, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, Joe shows up as a new zombie. Yes. I eat a bug. Yeah, I've added zombies to the movie, and um, <laughs> my favorite thing, I'm not even the best part of this thing, my favorite thing is... <laughs> I have a really angry friend who does a podcast, <laughs> and I let I replaced all the news segments with him, and I basically told him to just do Alex Jones and all those alternative media people. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. And it's some of the funniest stuff I've ever seen. It's fucking hilarious. He's blaming the zombie thing on everything, and then at the end, he, he doubts it's even happening. It's so <laughs> that, uh That does sound like Alex Jones to a T. <laughs> it sure does. Yeah. I was watching it, I actually mentioned this at the, uh, I don't know if it was in the beginning or the end, or maybe possibly both of our Ernest Scared Stupid episode, about how I was watching it right before I we recorded that episode, and just you out there with the fucking broom just oh, yeah. swatting <laughs> zombies away was just killing me. Oh, man. It's so good. And the fact, like you said, no one would let you in the damn house. What the hell, Ben? Yeah. What the hell, Barbara? I, I love the idea of the characters in the movie not letting you in, just it's like, who are you? What are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? Hey, get lost. I kind of want to put it like on a physical, like a limited physical thing or put it on Amazon Prime. I might film a couple new scenes 
because I realized while watching it, I'm like, oh, wow, I disappear for a really long time in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should probably, I was on a deadline. I didn't have a lot of filming days, so I, it had to come out. Sure. But I was watching it. I'm like, oh, yeah, there's like a good 10 minutes where I'm just gone. I probably should add a scene. <laughs> you got to remedy that. The special edition? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll just, uh, we'll treat you like Vegeta in every Dragon Ball Z movie where you just kind of, you know, you go away for a while. You just appear out of nowhere. Oh, yeah, yeah. Christ. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to fight Frieza in the in the Golden Frieza movie, but when I do, I'm going to beat him in like a minute flat. <laughs> I have no canonical reason to be here, but here I am. Oh, hello, Kakarot. Man, how is he not a character on this fucking show by now? <laughs> like, honestly, how did that never happen? Well, they didn't poorly adapt him into the Evolution movies, so. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Well, that's, yeah, yeah I think you just nailed it. So what else you got coming up, Tone? Nothing too much. I'm doing my own podcast now. It's, uh, yeah. it's called Film Trash Can, and uh, it's real original. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> huh. I have a podcast called uh, Castzilla vs. the Pod Monster where I talk about Godzilla stuff. And uh, my new sh- well, I was on that show Rental Reviews for uh, Cinemasker. That was a that was a big show and it got a lot of views and then we canceled it. <laughs> so now I'm doing a completely original show where I'm the host with way less views, but it's doing pretty well for me. So <laughs> Uh, check out Talking About Tapes. That's where that Frankenstein Unbound episode is going to be. That's where it's going to be. Oh, my God. Yeah. Unbound. Man, there's so much I could say about this, but I'll <laughs> save it for uh, after your episode. In, like, the same week, both C.B. Smith and, and Tony over here have, like, stumbled upon Frankenstein Unbound and been like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Oh, yeah. I've seen it before. You guys made me rediscover it. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, that's the goal of the show. <laughs> Having watched it, I was like, oh, maybe there's a reason my brain decided to forget most of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's a reason why John Hurt has become the villain of the MDU based on that film. I, I talk about it in that in that little yeah. spoiler. That's the crux of the the MDU. Is that is that movie? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I invoked his name, and Connor just invoked his name. But C. B. Smith. Yes. Uh, he, he is also doing something with Frankenstein Unbound because he was doing kind of a you know he does a show called Taking a Page. He's been on the show a few times. Check out that Orca episode from earlier this year. Oh, that was a good one. That was a good episode. I love Orca. Thank you. So that was a good one. And he uh, he was doing like a Frankenstein series for his show where he basically, just like he did on our show, compares the book to the movies. And he, he put two out already. Uh, the first one was like based on the original uh, 1930 Frankenstein and the original book. But then he did like, I want to say it was like a rewrite or like a, 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 it was like a release where they like changed a bunch of shit in the book. And then he compared that to Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Huh. And then he's doing a final episode with Unbound. And he was hitting us up with those uh, Unbound differences between the book and the movie. And my mind, my fucking head was spinning. Yeah. Uh, we, we might do something with that. We're not making promises now, but we were. We were talking to CB, so if 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 it if it's happening, you'll. We need to talk about it. We got to do it. <laughs> Based on the potential of that idea, I won't even reveal the crazy shit he told us because, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Because <laughs> the book goes off the fucking deep end. I'm almost upset that we didn't do that episode with him. Well, how could we have known? To be fair. No, I know, I know. Pro- it was proto MDU. So I'm. I, yeah. Also, like after watch the movie, like would you want to go read the book? Uh. <laughs> No. Yes. <laughs> it's just funny to me. I mean, we talk about this fucking movie all the time on this show, but it's just hilarious to me that at the tail end of 2020, it's all coming fucking full circle. Literally. <laughs> yeah. That and, um, like, I do what I do every year, which is watch Adam's Family around Halloween. Yeah, same. It always startles me how, like, you watch that performance, you're like, wow, Raul Julia is like a fucking lightning bolt you couldn't <laughs> hope to contain at all. And then you watch Frankenstein and Bound, you're like, wow, someone did it. Someone sedated Raul Julia. <laughs> And he's not exerting any energy whatsoever. <laughs> hey, hey, did you know that uh, Tony's father is Gomez <laughs> Adams? He is. I thought he'd be a great replacement. A lot of people didn't agree, though. I thought that <laughs> shit was so funny. I just have to say that. <laughs> it was great. Yeah, I pitched on my show a, a, a make-believe sequel. And I'm like, I came with this whole plot, which I'm actually going to flesh out in a video. Uh, and my co-host was like, well, Raul Julia died. I'm like, don't worry, I got a replacement. It's just my dad. <laughs> Doing, like, a really bad Gomez impression. Ah, <laughs> uh, good stuff. I fucking love it, dude. Yeah. My dad used to look like him in the 90s. Oh, I got to see a picture of that. Yeah. <laughs> my dad used to look like Tom Savini. Oh. When he was when he was a young man. Uh, my dad looks like the Dos Equis guy, which is very bizarre <laughs> when you look at me and my uh, moonlit complexion. 
my dad just kind of looked like my dad. I don't really have a point of comparison. I just felt like I had to say something. J- Joe has met my dad and has seen us stand side by side, and he can tell you that it is literally night and day. Yes, <laughs> because my dad's skin is brown and leathery, and he has the he has the complexion and texture of an old suitcase. <laughs> I was very taken aback. I was like, are you sure that's your dad? <laughs> Last name, McGraw. <laughs> You're not the Irishman I thought you'd be, but okay. No, he even told me, he says, uh, when I die, just turn me into a briefcase. <laughs> I was like, my God. Wow. Just go full Nazi. What? <laughs> I mean, he said turn him into a briefcase. You got to skin him or something and turn him into a briefcase. That's what they did. In full leather face. Sure, yeah. You know, Gunner's gonna, you know, Gunner ain't gonna do it, though. We all know he, he forces Haggerty to do yes. it against his volition. <laughs> he hates it. He can't stand it. It's weird, man. It's this guy's dad. I can't do it. Oh, man. Just, I'll look the other way when I do it. Wait, well, keep saying I smoke these cigarettes. It really gives it a, a special scent when it's done. That's how I tan my hides. I smoke them. I can't get the smell of margaritas out of this one because he's been listening <laughs> to Jimmy Buffett and drinking those for 50 years. He was looking for his lost shaker with salt. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's my dad is what happens when you put Tim Allen and Jimmy Buffett into the teleporter from the fly. <laughs> Oh, Lord. <laughs> Holy shit. And the most interesting man in the world. He's a very awesome dude. So how about rats? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I was going to say, even before we get to that, uh, do we have some Patreon questions? Oh. Uh, yes, we do. We got a couple here. And please, Tony, partake. Yes. You are part of the uh, the show uh, uh, this week, so uh, jump in. Oh, I will. And you can always head on over to that Patreon. It's patreon.com forward slash movie dumpster. Sign up for any tier and uh, ask us questions, and we'll answer them on this show. And you can always sign up for the $2 tier to get access to the posts, see what the hell we're doing behind the scenes. We just posted a bunch of pictures of the Dumpster Goblin and some behind-the-scenes videos from Trick or Trash, mm-hmm. including one of Joe ripping his face off. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> well, you know, it's a little tease. You know, you got to get people over there, right? <laughs> If you want to see the the wrong way to remove special effects makeup, go watch that video. <laughs> go pay that $2. Yeah. Have you ever seen Poltergeist? Just uh, That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, you sign up for that $5 tier. You get that. And you get the uh, commentary tracks, which, hey, secret's out, but. We got one coming this month, guys. Oh, yeah. We're going to be recording that one soon. Ooh. The Legend of Gator Face. Oh. Coming at you. Looking forward to that, just based on the fucking name alone. <laughs> and uh, $10 tier, you get all that. You get a movie dumpster t-shirt. Uh, you get a pin, glow-in-the-dark pin, and a sticker pack. I think you actually do also get the sticker pack for the $5 tier, but yes. all that stuff if you head on over to our Patreon. With that said, our first question from our friend... Leonardo, kind of like a question. He's got like kind of a two-parter here. Okay, they they're always big on those two-parters. Let's do it. <laughs> he says, "What's an album of music each of you would recommend? Old, new, mainstream, indie, doesn't matter." Oh shit. Oh, I was completely caught off guard for that one. Ooh, suddenly my ears have perked up. <laughs> the Transformed Man by William Shatner. <laughs> I have never heard that. What? That's that. William Shatner did a whole album of spoken word. He would do spoken word versions of popular songs. He, he parodies this all the time now, but like I think in the 60s and 70s, he was trying to make it legit. Oh my God. Was that that thing Family Guy did where Stewie does the Rocket Man thing? So Family Guy, so he did Rocket Man at a show, like an award show. Oh, yeah. But that was him parodying at that point it was already like a parody gotcha, and he's gotcha. done it on Priceline commercials and stuff but I think in like the 70s he legit he put an album out and I actually kind of unironically like it like I listen to it as a joke but there's something weird the way he's just doing spoken word versions of songs that kind of kind of resonate I don't know it's weird check it out it's pretty good I, I gotta look that up now it's also in like Futurama's based a lot of uh like Zap Brannigan's mannerisms off of Shatner. Yeah, I think in the the Titanic two episode, uh, when they they had the space for Titanic, I think. Wait, he wait, does... wait, hold on. You talking about the Futurama Titanic two episode yeah. or movie dumpsters <laughs> Titanic or 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 Tony's Titanic two episode? You know, you got some options here. The one that falls into a black hole. <laughs> Okay. Uh, at some point in that episode, Zap Brannigan does a spoken word version of a song, but it's just to Leela, and he's just spelling her name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, side note, this isn't my answer, but uh, Leonard Nimoy's uh, Bilbo song, to this day, is still a classic. Oh, yeah. Uh, I would have to say, it's a fairly recent one. Um, v&V Nation's uh, noir album, they are a... Uh, 
uh, I guess like a synth pop dark wave band who does a lot about theology, uh, like kind of social issues. They're anti-war, pro-peace. It's a really fun album. It's very energetic and it goes from kind of upbeat and poppy to like sinister and real cynical real fast. Um, but it's always interesting. The lyrics are great. And Ronan Harris has this amazing voice that is somehow coming out of like a four and a half foot tall drunk bald Irishman. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's my fa- they're my favorite band, and I would recommend them to anybody who wants to look for something new and interesting. So yeah, Noir by uh, V and V Nation. Um, I am probably the worst person with album titles, uh, so I'll just name a couple of people that I kind of always go back to. Uh, that maybe I don't know, maybe our listeners have heard of these bands, but I, I feel like maybe they haven't. Um, Chelsea Wolf's pretty damn good. Uh, Wind Hands, another one I always go back to. And then, uh, since I'm wearing the shirt, I'd be remiss not to mention them. Electric Wizard, even though they've been around since God, they probably the late 80s at this point. Yeah, well, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna recommend any Electric Wizard, that would be the one I would actually know the album title to is Dope Throne. Uh, you know, light up a Jaybird and just put that on, you're gonna be flying. Well, there you go. That's all I really got to say about that. <laughs> 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 Maybe, you know, here's one for you, Leonardo. Uh, Beatles. You ever hear of them? <laughs> Abbey Road, the White Album, maybe. <laughs> one, two, three. Well, no, screw that. Just listen to William Shatner sing one of the Beatles songs. He does "Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds." <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Is it on the same album? You're really turning me on to this now, Tony. Uh, all, all, all these answers are wrong. It's "Living Dead Girl" by Rob Zombie. <laughs> uh, oh Christ! Yeah. Well, if you're into uh, classic uh, prog rock um, and you haven't heard of them, definitely check out. Um, Captain Beyond, their self-titled album. Uh, I was just listening to that last night while I was cooking, and uh, I forgot how much I love that album. It's really good. Like, front to back, it's fucking phenomenal. Um, Really good shit. Uh, If there's no other answers, I have one more, um, just because every Halloween I do one more dive into these guys, and it always lasts for several weeks, if not months. Um, Either Nothing to Fear, Only a Lad, but Oingo Boingo, if you have not listened to Oingo Boingo in a serious capacity at all in your life, fucking shut up and do it. Yeah, fi- <laughs> fire up Only a Lad and fucking uh, Nothing to Fear. Just take the dive because holy shit, what a fun ex- uh, discovery that was. Mm-hmm. The second part of, well, his second question. P.S. I read a story about some dude who fell into a sinkhole in in his basement in New York and landed in a giant's rat's nest. Oh, <laughs> oh no! He says he's just going to chuck Ron Howard in there and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> not not Clint this time, uh, Connor. You know, it's not Clint we're fucking with. It's Ron, apparently. Yeah, what, what, what did Ron do? Wait, was that a question? I, it was more of a statement, I think, but... <laughs> okay, I was like, well, where's the question part? Well, okay, okay, first of all, calm down, John Kramer. Like, what are you, you going to fucking... <laughs> You jigsaw? Well, you know, you know, Leonardo, he's got a pattern here. He likes to throw people into shit, have ticks bite people, bugs bite people. Yeah. <laughs> Rats, apparently. So, I love the fact that he could potentially be this very gimmicky jigsaw where he's like, I want to play a game. And the, the person's like, you're going to throw me into a pit, right? He's like, I, how did you know? I win, and then he pushes you in. <laughs> Are the trolley logs down there? I got to ask that question. Yes. In Leonardo's version, absolutely. <laughs> It's rats, uh, trial logs, and syringes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And and the whole the whole fucking crew is there. Peahead, Cumdar. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And but also beneath those is a floor of uh, of lawnmowers. They're all uh, somehow going at the same time, just like that stupid scene in Saw Seven that still bothers me to this day. <laughs> oh my god. Well, you're on seven at that point. Yeah. I- <laughs> I know, like... I, I gave up at, like, three, and I, <laughs> I was forced to see, like, four, and I'm like, all right, I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. You're not... Wait, you're not excited for Spiral? I am. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. You know what? That one's, like, that one's so weird that I might give it a shot. Sure. I'm so fucking excited for that movie, it's not even funny. It makes my head spin. Cult of Jigsaw. Yeah. Moving right along to, uh, Dustin Elkins. How you doing, Dustin? What's your favorite show... From your childhood, he asks. Oh, that one's easy. Tales from the Dark Side. Ooh, had the shirt on and everything in the uh, last video for the uh, winner of the Trick or Trash. Look at that. I did. <laughs> it's like fate. I didn't, it wasn't intentional. I just had, happened to be wearing it. I got two for you. Family Matters, as I've talked about on this show in the past, go back to that Death Dream episode, or if you want to really go far back, go to uh, that, what the fuck was that movie with the, uh, the, the, 
nutrition egg and the kid getting eaten by his own by the suit's ass and all that. Oh, Star Kid. <laughs> Star Kid. Yeah, there you go. The Urkel Bot. The Urkel Bot. I'm glad you got. So, I'm glad you could figure that out because I was very lost. <laughs> yeah, sure. Joe can read my fucking mind sometimes. It's what I do, you know. And my other one would be Keenan and Kel, also brought up on the show many times. Oh yeah, there you go. With Ken Forey. Oh yeah. Yes, he definitely didn't fuck that chicken. <laughs> I guess my two favorite shows have been consistent since I... It's going to be weird, but I've loved, loved Seinfeld even since I was a kid. Yeah! Uh, so Seinfeld and Mystery Science Theater are probably like my two most watched shows of all time. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, actually, one of those uh, Mystery Science Theater I've been watching since... Since I discovered it on uh, Saturday mornings on Sci-Fi, I never broke my routine until they had finally canceled it. And even then, yeah. I was like, fuck it. I'll go get all these episodes by myself. <laughs> I was the same way. <laughs> Now they're all on YouTube. It's so much easier. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and well, for a while there was the uh, there was an internet movement called the uh, the MSC3K Digital Archive Project, and that like that little watermark was the bottom of every episode. Someone had just like uploaded to some fucking forum somewhere, mm -hmm. um, and that was like the only way to get full seasons. So I have like this stack of DVDs of just like uh, yeah. scattered seasons and all stuff like that. But yeah, like once I've, uh, I I watched that consistently uh, to this day. Mm -hmm. Um, and when it came back on Netflix, I was like, what? Yeah. I think you could stream them all on, uh, uh, Shout Factory now, right? Yeah. 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 And then of course, you know, invariably Netflix canceled it because it went longer than one season. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's enough. We got to make room for some more garbage. Yeah. And the other show was, uh, Kablam on Nickelodeon. Fuck yeah, Kablam. Oh man. Action League now. Kablam, for those who don't know, was a... Like, it was a an animation block, I guess you could say. It was like a variety show. It was a variety show, but it was like it was like five or six different shows that would kind of interweave in this one little 30-minute block. And um, it was stop motion. It was claymation. It was traditional. It was puppetry. Okay, I remember this now. It took me a minute. I didn't recognize the name. So good. It wasn't just like, oh, he, yeah, here's a claymation show. No, the claymation show is about an alien trying to teach a caveman how to use a fucking remote control. Prometheus and Bob. Yeah. And it would go poorly every time. Um, Action League now was like this like really bizarre take on the Justice League or the Avengers, but all these heroes were fucking dumb. Melt man. Man with the power to melt. That always that that like that was a huge inspiration when I was a kid, where we would make videos like of like the stop motion figures and shit like that. Yes. Yeah, because you watch Action League and now you're like, I could do this, and I find this hilarious. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, let's burn a fucking f action figure. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah let's let's take a Joe and dissolve him. What nine year old <laughs> can't relate to that? Let's flush it down the toilet. Wait, where'd it go? Stinky Diver. You can only do that shot once, though, you know? <laughs> Life with Loopy, yeah. and there was one more about two brothers. I couldn't remember the name of it. Life with Loopy was great. I'm, wait, what was that last one? It was, I can't remember the name of it, but it was the it was the traditionally animated one. It was about two weird, like, brothers. Like, they were, like, little bears or something. I can't remember what it was, but... Oh, I don't remember that one. And then you had, like, the uh, wraparound was... I forget their damn names, but, like, the guy and the girl. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And now they were, like, inside a comic book. Yeah. That was the whole thing. Yeah, and Kablam was the name of the, you know, the, the comic book that would wrap around all these episodes, yeah. Yeah, that was a good one. Uh, you know, speaking of Kablam, it, it, it made another show just pop in my mind, and uh, then we can kind of move on. Uh, Rugrats was one as a as a kid kid. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess that was a good one. Was uh, you know because they had it in the movie. They had uh, you know I don't know if Nickelodeon still does that, but they always have like a short in the beginning of the film, like the first few films they put out. Mm -hmm. And they had an Action League Now short, like a fifteen minute long short. Oh my god, I've never seen this. What? Yes, that's right. Yes, right before the Rugrats movie. Yeah, and it's like really high production value. It looks like a fucking movie. Yeah. And now we're talking Nickelodeon. Fucking Are You Afraid of the Dark? I mean, you can't leave that one out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The pool episode. Oh, the pool episode is so good. Yeah. It's a uh, dough. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no Mr. Accent on the dough, man. Uh, more questions like this in the future, please, everybody. These are awesome, actually. We're not hurting any anything yet, so... Uh, we'll, we'll get there, I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we haven't been asked to cause grievous bodily harm to, uh, to, a, to a Howard brother. Yes. Oh, I mean, we, we just were. <laughs> well, no, we weren't, at, we weren't asked to. We were just privy to someone doing it. Like, <laughs> sure. Voluntarily just, just forking it over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's true. Leonardo did not ask us if we would push him into the pit. He's just going to to do it yeah that's our toxic our toxic influence uh but thank you to leonardo and dustin awesome and that's all of the questions we have yeah i i want to tell a quick anecdote before you start breaking down the trivia joe sure i don't remember what episode this was to be perfectly honest but we, i got off on some fucking side tangent about this movie 
because I, about Peter Weller specifically, <laughs> I was thinking of Without Warning by Graydon Clark because we got on some fucking Predator side tangent and I just randomly start talking about, oh yeah, of unknown origin. And I go on this whole fucking side tangent about Peter <laughs> Weller doing some <laughs> documentary on the Aztecs. So if you heard that episode and you were very confused by that anecdote, <laughs> that is the explanation many episodes later. And this is the movie that you were referencing. But I thought I was referencing Graydon Clark Predator movie that <laughs> got ripped off and Arnold even kind of admitted to it later. <laughs> Just wanted to put that out kind of in front before I forgot. Hi, I'm Peter Weller and these are the Aztecs. <laughs> Let me hang out in this bathtub. This is what he would have seen. This is where they used to sacrifice people. Okay. <laughs> Welp. They used to put toxic waste in here and knock uh, criminals into it. Uh, have you ever heard of OCP? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, this movie's directed by uh, George Cosmatos, and uh, he directed Massacre in Rome, uh, the second Rambo film, First Blood Part 2, <laughs> Cobra, yeah. Leviathan, which is a, v- a fucking classic. I love that flick. It's basically like Aliens, uh, The Thing, it, it, on the set of The Abyss. It, it's fucking great. Uh, some great Stan Winston effects in that, too. And we got, Jesus Christ, we got Peter Weller in that. We got D- uh, Daniel Stern, Meg Foster, Ernie Hudson. Whoa. Uh, the guy who looks like Joe Pontigliano but isn't. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't get Joey Pants. He was asking for too much. <laughs> <laughs> that other bald guy. He was doing Baby's Day Out. Give him a break. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and he also did Tombstone. Yeah. A phenomenal movie. I looked at his IMDb and I'm like shocked he didn't do more after Tombstone. Yeah. Right? He did He did an episode of Joe Bob's Drive-In, which I thought was weird. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm like, wait, you did Tombstone and then you stop? I don't know. That was. I thought that was bizarre. Hey, you'll appreciate this, Tony, since you just said you like Seinfeld. He was like George Costanza. He wanted to go out on top. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing with that, you mentioned Joe Bob's uh, drive-in. Um, there's been other directors that have been featured, too. Uh, what I think it is is that their movies have been featured on Joe Bob's show. Is that it? Or did he actually direct an episode? I don't know. I feel like they got to fix that credit then because... Right, right. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't look that far into it. <laughs> Speak, speaking of Joe Bob, um, uh, some somebody here might have uh, oh, yeah. just been on uh, Joe Bob's Haunted Drive-In. Yeah, one of my shorts played at uh, Joe Bob's Haunted Drive-In, Gorilla. I didn't get to go, but uh, my uh, co-host and whatnot went. Uh, they said it was fun. Cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Congratulations, dude. That's really cool. Thank you. So this was written by uh, Brian Taggart, and he's done Visiting Hours, The New Kids, uh, Wanted Dead or Alive with Rucker Hauer, Poltergeist 3, the made-for-TV Omen one, the Omen 4, The Awakening. Oh! And the remake of Maximum Overdrive, originally with the huh? original title, Trucks, <laughs> for, and that was made for TV, too. What? Yeah. <laughs> Why does that exist? I, be, I don't know. I think it was at that time where, like, they were re- they they had just like redone The Shining for TV. Remember that? Oh yeah. And they were like, "Shit, let's do trucks." Were they like, "Hey, you know, Stephen King said he was so fucked up when he made that movie. He totally hates it. We could do better." <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love Maximum Overdrive. Yeah. Hey, we might have to do it one day. Let's be honest. It's fucking trash, and it's the best trash. I just love that the fucking truck has a Green Goblin fucking faceplate. Yeah, I love Omen Four. You do? I'm an Omen Four. Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen it in like 15 years, but I remember liking it. <laughs> but yeah, this is based on the novel The Visitor by Chauncey G. Parker III. That's not a real name. Mm, it's, a, it's a hell of a pen name, I'll tell you that. <laughs> why, like, I don't know. Why don't you just call him like, like G. Parker? He sounds like a, it's like a Pokemon. Chauncey. <laughs> I wrote that story about that rat. See now, this is a th- this is always a thing for me because like I I forgot that this movie was written was, was also a novel. Yeah. So now I have to fucking read it, <laughs> or at least or at least commission CB to like get it and be like, okay, you need to do an episode on this. <laughs> Here, suffer through this for me. Or buy the book and just stare at it on your shelf. Well, <laughs> buy it and read it, but yeah. <laughs> and I really don't have too much too much else. Uh, this Peter Weller's first lead role, uh, Shannon Tweed's first film. I am actually very familiar with Shannon Tweed's uh, catalog. Oh, yes. Uh, if you were, if you grew up in the late 90s, early 2000s and watched Cinemax After Dark, you, you found a lot of Shannon Tweed movies. <laughs> Sure did. And she played herself on Married with Children. Really? <laughs> yeah. Didn't know that one. Yep. So th- there's this one little weird tidbit about this film. Uh, apparently there's another 
there's a longer version of this film. Fuck me. So, <laughs> so my VHS is that we all watched is 90, 90 minutes, and then every other subsequent cut that's on disc is 89 minutes. Huh. So I don't know. I Theoretically, we watched the longer version, but I don't think another cut exists. Yeah, 89 minutes and 90 minutes? To- yeah, versus 90, it's like, eh. D- Does, like, one tape have a preview in front of it that's the only thing i can think of <laughs> they cut out like one of those office scenes they're like ah we don't really need this one minute here they cut out winda merle's scenes yeah yeah <laughs> it's the fbi warning at the beginning but uh but yeah this is uh this is out as of now it's it's uh in part of scream factory's uh catalog and you can get that blu-ray Ooh. which i don't own and i'm going to purchase it but we'll get to that later sure unlike some of the other people that that are on this podcast right now <laughs> yeah i'm probably gonna give this one a skip for the rest of my life but uh, <laughs> uh i just want to run down the effects guys real quick because they've done some incredible work uh we got lewis craig uh stefan de and jacques uh godbout oh by the way this is a canadian american production so we got a lot of french canadian people working on this oh so i mean collectively these guys have worked on scanners happy birthday to me the peanut butter solution the vindicator the fly the kiss total recall robocop one two and three arachnophobia virtuosity are you afraid of the dark uh brain scan witchboard three night of the demons three the worst witch uh, Martyrs, Battlefield Earth, The Bone Collector, Dr. Jekyll and Ms. Hyde, and the and Texas Chainsaw. Now, which remake is that? Did you say Dr. Jekyll and Miss Hyde? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, it's a good one. I remember that. For, well, okay. question mark. I got, <laughs> got to revisit. Mrs. Hyde has sex with a dude, but then starts turning back into a man, and her boobs shrink <laughs> into a dude's chest. <laughs> okay. Okay, I kind of got to see that now. <laughs> It's fucking nuts. I can't tell you literally anything else that happened in that movie. That is the only scene that stuck out of my memory. <laughs> sure. I just remember that the dude turns into, you know, he figures out a potion that makes him into a woman. That's it. Okay. I just, I'm very distracted by that big old black eye in the middle of that list with Battlefield Earth. Like, ugh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel bad for anyone who had to serve catering uh, while working that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they also did the Texas Chainsaw. I don't know which remake, which, which remake is that? Uh, okay, so Texas Chainsaw was the 3D one. Yeah, that's the 3D one. Okay. That was one of the worst horror films I'd ever seen in a movie theater, and I left that day. I was in a bad mood the rest of the fucking day. Ugh. Well, are you telling me you didn't, you didn't like Leatherface's cousin throwing him a chainsaw? Yeah, and it ends with her going, get him, cuz, and then Leatherface has a face turn and, uh, cuts him apart. It also has, like, the most has the audacity to be a direct sequel to the first film. But it changes the timeline. It's so stupid. Yeah, yeah. it changes the timeline and has these massive retcons um, and essentially tries to steal the plot or like the opening of Devil's Rejects and just has the entire family from the first movie just murdered in a, a hail of gunfire. Oh, but there's more family members. It's so stupid. Yeah, yeah, there were secret babies they hid in a shed. I'll, I'll come back for that episode, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate that movie. When that f- sixth remake comes out, yeah, we're do we're gonna do Texas Chainsaw. Ugh. Oh, apparently the Leatherface prequel is a prequel to that continuity, the Texas Chainsaw 3D continuity. Are you fucking? I watched I watched that movie too, and I wanted to fucking slit my wrists. God, I hated it so much. Yeah, we'll we'll we'll, we'll come back for those. <laughs> Man, jo- Joe's crushing my dreams right now because we literally just talked about doing the Matthew McConaughey one like over text like a week ago, and now we're doing this piece of shit. Wow. <laughs> hey, maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, maybe we do that. Maybe we do Next Generation, and then just fuck. Maybe we do a double feature. Fuck it. We we love hating ourselves, right? <laughs> yeah, we could. We could just do a Texas Chainsaw month because there's so fucking many of them. Yeah. <laughs> we we could. You could you could do a month of reboots of Texas yeah. Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> Texas Chainsaw the reboot. I like that. I like that idea for an event month. We just do all the fucking reboots. We did a whole month of just reboots of the same franchise. <laughs> of the same franchise. Sign me up. That's what. That's it. Ooh. Solidified. So anyway, um, Tony, would you like to plot crunch this film for us? Okay. Okay. So uh, Peter Weller's wife and son are going out of town to visit some family. And he has a really important document that he only has a two-week deadline on. And he fucks around and tries to kill a rat instead and almost loses his job and destroys his career. (laughs) Yeah! 
<laughs> instead of just hiring an exterminator or fumigating the place and getting in a hotel because he's not hurting for money, he uh, goes insane. Yeah. So there you go. There's the movie. There's the goddamn movie. <laughs> It's the movie house, but remove all the uh, ghosts from it. And insert a rat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I kept, the whole time, I'm like, huh, this kind of reminds me of house. And then I'm like, well, actually, technically house came after this. So I guess house reminds me of uh, of, of unknown origin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You think Cunningham cribbed it? He was like, hey, did you guys see a, a, of unknown origin? Let's do that with ghosts. That's funny, because uh, this 90-minute affair reminded me of the 10 minutes I was trapped in a living room, and Medea goes to fucking... <laughs> Halloween, whatever the fuck. <laughs> was Peter Weller in the corner just like drunk? Yeah, he was he was like <laughs> I can't stress enough how avoidable this situation is. Like Yeah. The whole thing is he could have gotten an exterminator and he's like, No, I rebuilt this house and they're gonna tear it up. I'm like, Well, you don't know that for sure. Wow. Like, well <laughs> that and then like and then he's like he's like, uh, oh, you know, there's so many exterminators, but none of them fucking call me back. <laughs> It's avoidable, but then he goes off the deep end to an for an avoidable situation. It's like, dude, this is so extra at this point. Like, you need to be committed. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, I get it. It's annoying. Like, it's destroying his house, and it needs to be taken care of, and you might get some damages. But again, he's he's working on some big contract that he's going to make a lot of money from. Mm -hmm. And I feel like he can hire the exterminator, do that, and f solve the problem. Instead, he just goes insane. It's a pr it's a pride problem. For sure, I think so. It's so stupid. <laughs> this is what, it's it's what drove Alex Murphy to become a cop. <laughs> it's the prequel. <laughs> oh, there you go. There's the thread. Oh, it's coming. He changes his name and just moves to Detroit. <laughs> he, yeah, and what luck! He gets killed in his first day. <laughs> yeah, right. He's like, we're we're, mo we're moving out of we're moving out of this hole. He's like, this reminds me of that rat. Lance, but Clarence Bodker's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Die. <laughs> Can you fly? So yeah, like Tony said, uh, we we open up and and we meet Shannon Tweed and and uh, Peter Weller and their characters are Meg Hughes and Bart Hughes and they have this stupid little kid <laughs> whose name is Peter and Shannon Tweed takes off for I don't know I guess a week with the son because her father owns like he's like super rich he owns like a ski resort and shit. Um, and there's this whole exchange where Peter Weller's like, I don't want your dad paying for anything because I, we paid for this with our own money and I, I re renovated this whole house from the bottom up, so don't fuck with it at all. Um, he's also like a neat freak too, you know, and I don't blame the guy. He worked very hard for that house. Hey man, not a single machine touched that floor. No, he, he did it by hand. Beautiful. Uh, so I'm used to seeing Peter Weller in RoboCop. Yeah. So like when I see him out of the RoboCop suit, I forget like how fucking thin that guy is. Yes. Oh, he's a little dude. Yeah. I'm looking in here. I'm like, man, that guy needs a sandwich. He is super thin. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking absolutely love him in this. I I love Peter Weller in everything. He he's he is phenomenal. I gotta say, he's so good. The guy the guy came out of his mother's womb knowing how to act. Oh, yeah. The charisma is, like, unmatched. <laughs> Peter Weller is one of my favorite Batman performers because he voices Bruce in the Dark Knight Returns animated features, and he is the fucking man in those movies. He did a good, yeah, he did a good Batman in that. He's so good, uh, He and he's not someone I would ever peg as, like, a Batman uh, actor, and he is phenomenal in those movies. I mean, how many how many Batman actors are you trying to peg? I mean, that's kind of a weird... <laughs> All of them. I have a belt. I, I think it's weird that you list, have a list of Batman actors you want to peg. But but he's not on it. Get the fuck out of here, Joker fan. I don't want to hear anything from you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Is Keaton above Kilmer or below him? <laughs> Ooh. I guess it depends on my mood, really. I, I would say above, right? Nah, Kil Kilmer's not doing too hot. You don't want to peg him. I don't think he can take it. He's, he's not doing too well these days. Uh, that's right, yeah. I think you'd kill him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Val. So he's like work. He works for this company who they, or they like do trust funds or whatever for like huge companies. So he was banking on getting this big account to like finish paying off the house and stuff. So that's like the whole uh, catharsis uh, of of this home and like how he's built it and all this shit and paid for it himself. And it's like Clark's with his swimming pool in, <laughs> va in Christmas vacation. <laughs> Kinda. Um. So he so he's a, he's about to get this job. And he's like, great. So they take him off the fucking job and they stick him with something else. And like he's he like specializes in like mergers of companies. And this other thing that he's working on, I don't even know what the fuck. They don't go into it, but it's like some account that he has to do. The MacGuffin. Yes, yeah, the MacGuffin. 
<laughs> Apparently it's very complicated and he's not good at it, so he's under a lot of stress already from his job. And they're giving him like a short deadline for it. Yeah, two weeks, and he's like, oh man. Yeah, it's it's very like, in two weeks, exec you speak, blah blah blah, exec you speak. But it's like that whole thing too where his boss is like, hey, I'm putting you on this because I think you can get it done. I gave the other guy that job because he kind of sucks. So, like, you kind of see where I'm going with this. He's like, yeah, okay, boss. <laughs> Lawrence Dane, uh, Elliot Riverton is his boss. Yeah. Uh, I also want to point out that Peter Rowe's character has this. Okay, so, like, there's a lot of people in this movie who have this very particular quality about them, and that's that everyone's on edge for some reason. Sure. And Weller's character always seems like he is just one minor inconvenience away from going, that's it, everybody dies. <laughs> Listen, cool cat. And everyone there would be like, yeah, we kind of expected one of us to do it eventually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, he's always, like, he's always just staring off into space like, man, today could be the day. I, no, maybe not. <laughs> I do want to also mention one of his co-workers who comes up a little bit more later in the film. Uh, Maury Chaikin. Yeah. I always think of this guy, if you saw My Cousin Vinny, yep. he's the guy that's like, I make the world's fastest grits. <laughs> He doesn't actually say that, but he says how quickly he made the grits, and that's what Joe Pesci says, and that whole scene, that guy. Yeah, sure. There's a lot of that, and they go to the they go to the office, and then you know we get our we get our little glimpse of the rat in like a reflection in his toaster, and he goes back to back and forth to work a few times before we actually get into the meat and potatoes of this. So that being said, he comes home one day, and he's working on the he you know he gets the report that big job. Uh, and he's like, fuck, you know, I got two weeks to do this. Uh, that sounds like all the video work that I have to do every day. <laughs> it's like, hey, I, I need this tomorrow. And it's like 10 hours of animation. What do you say? <laughs> okay. I'll get right on it. Yeah. Here's 15 hours of work. I need it in one hour. Have fun. Yeah, sure. You got it. You mean something that usually takes two to four weeks to produce? Okay. Well, how's tomorrow sound? So he's working on this thing, and he hears fucking water running, and he goes into the fucking kitchen, and it's flooded out. Yeah. Like, completely. I would have lost my shit yeah. if I saw this. <laughs> and Peter Weller's just like... He just grabs, like, two fucking hand towels. He's like, I don't need this right now. Yeah, that's like... that. Uh, maybe they're, maybe he's just got so much pent-up rage. That's what I'm saying! <laughs> Maybe that's why he goes so nuts uh, later, but no, he actually goes nuts pretty fast. So that's why it's so odd he's so calm the first time. Yeah. He just, like, walks in the kitchen. He's like, all right, so this is happening now. Okay, I got to do it. <laughs> well, his whole thing is, like, as long as it's procedural, he doesn't give a fuck. Like, he's fine with it. He's like, well, if I knew this was going to happen, it would be okay. But I guess I got to deal with it now. If I knew my kitchen was going to be underwater, it would be fine. But I didn't know, so it's a fucking disaster! He has to find reasons to not go nuclear every 15 seconds. Like, he's like, it's okay. Yeah. Just, I can't, I can't. It's just, not everybody dies. <laughs> Let me fucking tell you something. That floor is ruined. Yeah. It, oh, it, yeah. It, there's no fucking way! It's not leaking. There's like a, it, a few inches of water just hovering. There. Yo, yeah. Yes, there's like just coming out of his dishwasher. Yeah, not only that, it's like leaking down the fucking stair. It's going all over the place. <laughs> Slam cut to the next morning, and he's got this plumber with his ass sticking out of the fucking dishwasher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I w I wouldn't have called just since I know you have so much going on at the building next door, but I couldn't get in touch with anybody else. So, uh, yeah, thanks for coming over. So this guy's Cleet, and he's played by uh, Louis Del Grande. Does anybody know who the fuck this guy is? Nope. No. No. He is the infamous guy from Scanners who who Michael Ironside blows his fucking head up. Oh, oh son of a bitch, shit. he is. Yep, dude. But like, he's awesome in this movie. I think I I think the chemistry between between him and Weller are fucking so good. And like, they're yeah. just quipping back and forth to each other. It's fucking great. Yeah, but their 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 chemistry is that of like Weller's a man who's just one bad day away from sh like just going you know like falling down. Michael Douglas and. Uh, <laughs> And this other guy is someone who seems to live his life to where he's just constantly antagonizing everyone he meets because, like, sure, Weller's like, Weller will say something, and this guy will repeat, like, the last word of that sentence as if he's going to stab him next. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, traps, yeah, I'll kill you in your sleep tonight. I'm so confused by this character because, okay, so what, so... Peter Weller, he has a house. He doesn't have, like, an apartment complex with, like, a handyman. Oh, it's a fucking gorgeous brownstone right in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. So this guy lives next door and works on the apartments, I guess. But then we see him, like, digging in a trash can later. Yeah. He's... And it's like, is he homeless? What? Who is this guy? <laughs> and uh, as my girlfriend said while we were watching this, 
He knows a lot about rats. And at one point, my girlfriend's like, is this guy supposed to be like Quint from Jaws? <laughs> <laughs> is he the rat Quint? <laughs> he caught, kind of also at different parts of the film just like lets himself into Peter Weller's house without announcing himself. Yeah. yeah. In the back door, too. And it's like not even his building. So that's the that's the weird part. Yeah. But to, to Tony's point, yeah, he is like the Quint. He even has a fucking little monologue where he's like, I was in the army. You know, the rats or whatever. Uh, they take over shit, you know, they're, they're fucking nasty fuckers. Yeah, and then he's, he says, like, oh, we, we did atomic tests, yeah. <laughs> and uh, the microbes died, the plants died, but the rats didn't. And then Whoa. they fucked. <laughs> so, so I guess Eobard, if ever, if your rat Eobard ever wanders onto, like, a nuclear test site, don't worry, he'll be fine, according to this movie. Oh, well, what luck, I live in the, the very home of nuclear test sites. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh. This this guy also like you know like Tony was saying about the rats like he's the one that initially floats this idea to Peter Weller because first he's like oh, I can't be a rat well, no way I don't have rats this exchange is so great because he's like hey uh, you see any mice no I didn't see any mice you sure you didn't see any mice and he's like no I didn't see any mice oh well it would have took an army of mice to fucking do that hole and he's like uh, I, I just told you I didn't see any mice he's like well maybe it's a rat then and he's like a rat there's no fucking rats he's like well I just said it was a rat so it's probably a rat only a rat could do that. I don't think so. Get the fuck out of my house, Cleet. <laughs> Leave before I murder you. Yeah. <laughs> Cleet's like, not if I stab you first. The, the back and forth with these guys is just so funny. Especially, like, then, well, we'll get to it, but there's, like, another random guy that's kind of like Cleet, but we never really know who the fuck he is. He's, like, a junk store salesman. Oh, this, like, store owner? Yeah, that was bizarre. <laughs> So yeah, it turns out that the rat that has taken up residence in uh, Peter Weller's brownstone has chewed a hole through his fucking dishwasher drain, and that's what flooded out the kitchen. Just the beginning. So he's like, all right, son of a bitch. So then he sets up some mouse traps all over his house. So it's like, you know, <laughs> yeah. classic wooden mouse trap. Yeah. For a rat! Let me tell you something right now. Eobard is not a giant rat by any stretch of the imagination. Sure. If you tried to get him in a mouse trap now, he would laugh. <laughs> he is a big boy. <laughs> right, right, right. So so think of it this way. You have a fancy rat, so like this fucking rat's even bigger than that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have, well, I, he's not fancy. He's he's just cute. No, <laughs> I mean... The, you gotta get him a nice little hat. The breed, if you will, the domesticated rat. There you go. But this guy has a point, though. Like, your standard mouse trap, like, I don't really... Like, I, like I'm not saying he would just walk away. Like, it would probably hurt, but... I I can imagine your average domestic pet rat could survive a standard mouse trap easily. I mean, don't don't try it. Anybody that has any ideas after him saying that, but yeah, sure. Yeah, please please don't. But for the sake of discussing it, I feel like a sewer rat would fucking not even sniff at that fucking thing. They'd be like, yeah, fuck you. I, I'm surprised. I'm surprised this rat didn't put on boxing gloves and just be like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it kind of does at one point. Th this rat, I'm so confused if it's evil or just like a prankster. <laughs> well, it really depends because like when they use, it, it's kind of like an orca thing to a point. So, well, it gets to a point. You know what I mean? I mean, huh, it really goes full orca later on in the film. Yeah, it does. My point of bringing that up is when we talked about that movie, there were shots that were very obviously in a tank, and there were shots where very obviously it was just, you know, stock footage. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this movie, there are shots that are very obviously of just a rat that they put water all over to make it look dirty. Yeah. And then, like, a fucking, like, I don't know what this, like, a prosthetic rat or some shit, some animatronic rat. No, it's a, it's a, it's a puppet. It's a puppet, animatronic, yeah. But it looks extra gnarly compared to the real one. Oh yeah. Yeah, and there's uh there's these kind of cool shots of like its foot like over a surface. But the problem for me is like cuz I see his feet every day and even for a big rat like it's like an eagle claw. It's ridiculous <laughs> looking. It's like it's like <laughs> Alan Grant should be over there being like, "Yeah, he'll come across your stomach like this and spill your intestines." <laughs> well, that's why I I thought this movie was building up that way like it was a giant rat i mean it is a giant rat but it's no but I, I was expecting like something like a large dog or something yeah oh like graveyard shift or something but it's really not it's just like a slightly bigger rat <laughs> yeah like an actual r-o-u-s but no yeah yeah it's, it's just a it's just a <laughs> and not not even or, or maybe like mo i thought maybe it was gonna be like multiple rats right but it's just one rat <laughs> now this is my second time seeing this movie i saw it one time previously with joe uh, like maybe twelve years ago. Yeah, that was it. Was a good basement uh, night that night. <laughs> yes, and I think what you just described, Tony, was my expectation on my initial viewing, and I was very upset by the end of the film that that is not where it went. 
Uh, <laughs> taking that out of the equation this time, you know, slightly different end result. But uh, yeah, I totally get where you're coming from. Yeah. This fucking thing is bigger than a domestic cat. It's huge. Really? It didn't come off that big to me. Like By by the end, it's at least like groundhog sized. Do, do, well, we'll get to the part where it, it shows its true size. But um, look, if, I'm just saying, if, if you say giant rat, like it's got to be like a Great Dane to impress me. Sure. <laughs> oh, OK. You want like fucking mutant rat. Yeah, that's what I was expecting. <laughs> It's like the original King Kong. If they're like, hey, I'm making a movie about a big gorilla. They're like, oh, is it giant? It's like, oh, no, it's like a foot and a half taller than a regular gorilla. It's like Mighty Joe Young. It's the size of a Great Dane. Well, is it is it going to fight T-Rexes? And it's like, yeah, but it's not going to be very good at it because it's only a slightly <laughs> taller. Like, the monster has to be big. <laughs> sure, I get that. Uh, well, it's not hand. It's, uh, it's You can't hold it in your hand, right? Like, it's not, you know. I, I guess, yeah. You can't put it in your pocket. It's definitely bigger than that. <laughs> you could cradle it like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could swaddle that fucker up yeah but yeah like i just want to touch on what connor was saying yeah they have these really cool close-ups which are definitely like a real rat tail and and paw or what have you but then there's also these really cool shots where they'll go th- the camera will like go through like a pipe right or like spaces between the walls it's really fucking cool i mean i'm i'm, I'm into that i dug those rat vision well yeah but it's not clouded with no like filter or anything it's just regular <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's actually like you can see what's happening yes <laughs> it's not amber tinted and wall-eyed like the werewolves in fucking American World of Paris. Exactly. Uh, also, every time they would switch between, like, the, the close-ups, like the, like, the prosthetics or, like, the real rat, like, I had uh, polar opposite reactions. So, like, I see this, like, prosthetic, I'm like, well, that's just ridiculous. And then, like, a close-up of the rat's face, and I'm like, oh, look at these little fucking eyeballs. <laughs> I had the same reaction. So Peter Weller sets all the traps in his house, and um, he he goes to work and comes back home again and checks all the traps. And this one trap is just fucking rocked. It is total. It's like bit up and like bit in half, and like there's chunks out of it, and the fucking metal's all mangled and shit. And then uh, Peter Weller says, "See that super rat did that," and I was like, "I was like, now super rat. That's a good title for a movie." <laughs> what what? The, hey, Cleet, what the fuck is this? What is this? This rat fucking ate this thing. Now what do I do? And he's like, nah, man, you don't want... What is that? Your grandmother's trap or some shit? <laughs> Get that grandma shit out of here. He he makes, like, four different comments about, like, did your grandma do blank? <laughs> Who gave you this? Your grandma? Your grandma? You buy those mouse traps from your grandma? Is this rat come from your grandma? God. Oh, <laughs> I'll bite away. Come here real quick. Look out the window. You see that? Best legs in the fucking building. Oh, I guess she cut herself shaving. Okay, here's some metal traps. Try those. Is that your grandma? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is that weird? Is that weird aside looking out yeah. the window? <laughs> So he's, he's a fucking peeper, man. And, and Peter Weller smiles. He's like, yeah, she has, yeah, but I've seen my wife's not around. I can, I can look. I'm going to cheat on her with my secretary later, but maybe. Ah, uh, let's, we got to wait for that because I got words. I have words for this guy's character uh, by the end of this movie, okay? <laughs> you know how much I have a problem with like random romance inserted into a film? Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I agree. We'll get there. So the best legs in the building walks by, and um, this guy has a has. This is where he has his fucking uh, Clint or uh, Cl- Clint, <laughs> his Clint Howard monologue. No, his his Quint. Uh, I am infested. <laughs> Oh, that would have been good. This guy gets fucking infested with rats. Oh, God. Now, he talks about that one time some guy threw his brother into a pit of rats. <laughs> oh, yeah. There you go. But, yeah, he's like, that's the whole atomic test site. He's like, yo, everything died except the rats. But uh, I just want to let you in on a little secret. Like, you're spending 20% thinking about him, but it's spending 100% of its time thinking about you. You want to know why? Because it's a fucking rat. It's got nothing better to do. <laughs> Okay. And then he says, oh, you, what are you using to try to trap this thing? He's like, oh, the sharpest cheddar I could find. He's like, ah, oh, no, you gotta use bacon. Did you remember to wear the gloves? What gloves? <laughs> I told you about the gloves. He's like, you did not. And I, I was on Peter Weller's side. I'm like, he didn't say any fucking thing about gloves. He mentions it so offhandedly. He's like, he's like, yeah, you get some gloves and you do the thing. And it's like so like, and he's like not even looking at Peter Weller when he's talking about it. And then later he's like, what are you talking about? I fucking said gloves. And then Peter <laughs> Weller gets these like fucking like. Mad Max metal traps to kill these fucking rats. <gasps> they are the most <laughs> cartoony traps. I, like, the Wiley Coyote has had more realistic traps than this guy. Yeah, they look like something designed by Jigsaw. They are these yeah. giant fucking awful crude metal contraptions just like bolts and springs and sharp objects. Like One of them has got a chain on it. Like, it's so ridiculous. 
Yeah, they're like they're like little bear traps. I feel like you could fit Ernest in there, and he's shouting, "Hey, rim, Rimshaw, 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 help me! <laughs> Bring me a stick, Rimshaw." Did glue traps not exist yet? I I don't know. Uh, I I feel like a glue trap probably gonna solve this problem. It's, it's possible. It could, but uh, those are terrible, and I hate them. No, no, I I do too. But I mean, if there was a giant rat, uh, well, a not so giant rat. <laughs> That you're trying to catch it. I love that. I love the idea of like a glue trap being too like. Ah, it's too, what are you talking? That's too high tech. Here, here's this spring loaded fucking robotic cyborg trap that's just available <laughs> on the market. Look, I think we could all agree if we were stuck in a house with this rat, then we would probably go glue trap. I think so. I probably would have bought a shotgun. <laughs> uh, to tell you the truth, like, I would just. Why not like a like a bait cage, right? Where they like go into it and then it closes, like how hey, you catch a fucking raccoon or something. Why not that? Hey man, he's not he's not afraid to get his hands dirty. <laughs> oh, that's right. What do you? Yeah, he's not a grandma. He's, he's not, not a his grandma. grandma. And, what? Oh yeah, yeah. I don't I don't know about you boys, but I'll grab that rat with my bare hands. That you know it is it's it's her rat. It's gotta be. No, that's what I was saying before in the chat. I was like, this is fucking GVD's familiar. This fucking thing, Queen Rat. Ah! Where's my? Oh no. Oh, I need. A new one now. Oh, yeah, she's it's my lap dog of the devil. Where's Fluffy? I heard she was loose in this house. So he so he sets up these metal traps and he's like he's like watch and weep you furry little fucker and he like puts one of his kids toys in it and like chops off the fucking head. Yeah, <laughs> that was pretty mean. <laughs> like yeah, <laughs> sorry son. You couldn't get like a carrot or something. Like <laughs> uh, okay, so I I have I have theories about like the family dynamic because I think it's like secretly fucked up. Yeah, they there's something fucked going on but they never go into it they touch on it a lot well he's up ups he's obsessed with his son but he's always like hemming and hauling about his wife yeah and like so here's the thing like this movie opens up and wife is just like she almost pulls like a lawnmower man wife moment she's like i'm leaving because reasons and uh but she's like yeah i'm gonna stay at my dad's for you know uh, bye if they didn't include any footage of her just making random phone calls I'd say she was going to fucking spend the weekend at her, like, her, her fucking, you know, um... Dr. Angelo's? Yeah, like, no, like, at a rich, like, you know, at her, like, her rich old man's, you know, dirty little secret or something like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she's making a fucking house call to Pierce Brosnan, yeah? Yeah, something like that. But she, like, seems like everything's fine, and then... Right! Right, exactly. It's weird. But, like, the son is presented as, like, this, like, kind of an idiot. He's a dumb little shit, for sure. <laughs> yeah, he's a dumb little shit, and, like... I don't know, their phone calls are weird, and he never really seems to be bothered by their absence. It really seems like something weird is going on, and then it's further complicated later on by a certain character who shows up to add nothing to the fucking film. Yeah. I don't know, I feel like he's constantly talking about his son this entire movie, like to the secretary, to fucking Clee. Well, he's talking about all the good stuff in his life, and he like really loves his son or whatever, but like just to Tony's point real quick, like, yeah, like, you know... The wife comes, but there's never any, like, tension between him and the wife. Right. And every time he talks to her and sees her, everything seems to be fine. Like, she doesn't have a problem. And he, like, tries to, like, later we'll get to it, but, like, he tries to insinuate that there's a problem. But yeah. it doesn't really happen. And, and I don't see it coming from her at all, you know? Their chemistry is weird because, one, they don't have any screen time together, like, really, when, at the end of the day. And, two, like, they... They have this air that something's up, but neither wants to approach the subject. Yeah. Sure. And is it that, I mean, it might be that dynamic where the thing is like, oh, I married this girl and her dad's rich and he thinks I'm a piece of shit. So I need to do everything in my power to, to like, you know, buy the house, renovate it myself, pay for it myself, all that kind of shit. You know what I mean? I honestly think it's one of those things like, um, because his wife's out of the picture for the film and he's around the secretary for all these functions throughout, it's like, well, he's a businessman, of course, obviously. I guess, but it doesn't really, I don't know, it's weird. No, it's totally weird. It, it, it adds nothing to the movie. Yeah. No, not at all. Also, we never see the scene where, like, the dad, like, hates him or anything, so it's like, well, why is he? <laughs> no. Right. Right. Better question, did we ever see the dad? We do. We do? I don't remember that. Yeah. We do? I couldn't identify him. We see him a couple times. He's in the pool having a coronary because Peter's wearing him out. <laughs> Are we sure it's not the sugar daddy? Like, is that not just the rich man she's fucking on the side? No, that's gra that's grandpa. That's grandpa. It's grandma and granddad. <laughs> he's in the pool, and then he's like, he's at like some kind of fucking buffet table later. You know what? I just think maybe Peter Weller's insane. It could be. Yeah. I there's no wife. <laughs> like, or no, no, no. Just at, like at the end, there's like no rat. <laughs> it's like, honey, what did what did you do? Yes. <laughs> oh, that's what I took away from it. There's no cleat. Cleat's like a imaginary character. It's like a part of his psyche. <laughs> There. He's like this Tyler Durden. <laughs> oh my god. 
the creepy the creepy fucking janitor yeah i i am the all singing all dancing crap of the world <laughs> i shot myself in the mouth with a gun i'm all better now yeah so then bart he, he he's obsessed with this rat so he just like talks to his secretary he's like ah oh, yeah i got to leave early for lunch i got i got some work to do and he goes to the library and I, he must have spent hours there on his lunch just looking at rat videos rat magazines uh i hated this entire sequence <laughs> before you break it down this is this is another one of those Jaws moments. It, it felt very like Brody sitting in his chair, like looking through the books. Yeah, like I get that the idea of this is to portray the antagonist, you know, correctly, but like the animal lover me just can't watch this objectively because it's like he's like, I need, I need to learn about rats. Let me watch videos of them eating their young uh, <laughs> in lab environments where yeah. they all clearly have some kind of horrible fucking flesh eating disease. Probably. Or or starved. And let me watch videos of them being so sickly their tails fall off and then eat them. Like it's stomach churning. And biting people. Yeah. Yeah, it's stomach churning stomach churning shit and I hated it. Yeah. yeah. Hey, this, this one had to bother you tony they, they go right for the eyes they love the taste of the eyes <laughs> <laughs> they go right for the goddamn eyes by the way this is where we get the title of the movie oh yes. yeah because he has it on the screen it's in a quick ass cut of just like a sign or something yeah it's like rats the latin name for rat and then it says of unknown origin i'm like what tm do rats have an unknown origin that's what i thought i thought like well they're the rat that's their origin. They hail from parts unknown. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, like, well, I mean, like, they're, they're, they're rats. I mean, they're related to other the rats and mice, and they probably have a common ancestor. Like, I Right, yeah. I don't think anyone thinks, like, rats just showed up one day. <laughs> exactly. I think that's the... I feel like that was, like, a producer's, like, yeah, no one's going to get the name unless you, like, slide that in there somewhere. <laughs> and it still doesn't make sense. I'm like... <laughs> I mean, I guess, like... The way I thought about it was when it's called of unknown origin. It's like they don't know where the fucking rat came from. But you live in New York, New York City. Yeah, but like, I'm, I, so when I heard the title and then I remembered it was about a rat, I'm like, oh, okay. So of unknown origin, maybe this movie there's like a killer rat and they don't know where it came from. But no, no, it's just that's what the book said that they don't know where rats in general came from. <laughs> Originated. I, I think I think New York is the only place where you could conceivably like take a group of humans and then place them there, and they'd be like, "Oh no, rats!" Yeah. Well, that's where you could be like of unknown origin. Like, oh no, suddenly there are rats. <laughs> There's also alligators down there too, which we'll get to in another episode. Well, then he, he goes to this like dinner meeting. Yeah. Did, okay. Yeah. I love this fucking scene. This <laughs> this despite all the falsities in his information. Um. This monologue is fucking great. Yeah. Well, it's all over the fucking place. Yeah. He's an important dinner meeting with like all these like these like haughty toddy fucking executives from his uh from his job. And he's being real awkward, like already. He's being quiet. He's being consumed by this rat problem, by the way. <laughs> so Yeah. I can't remember how oh, someone says like are you okay there, Bert? And he's like, what does he say? He's like, yeah, just picking at the bones. Yeah, they're eating like quail or some shit at the at the dinner. Yeah, which is important. And then he 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 goes off into like this Homer Simpson esque Thomas Edison speech, where he just starts <laughs> talking about rats for fifteen minutes. Well, he he asked that he asked like the, I guess like the big CEO of the company's like, "How's your trip?" And he's like, "It was great. I love New York." And he's like, "Did you know that one fifth of all the grain is destroyed by rats in this fourteenth century? The rats carried the bubonic plague flea from from China to Sweden or some shit like that. They eat through lead and concrete." And you know, some countries like the Philippines, they kill them because they have to, to eat them. Because they get, you know, stringy chicken. <laughs> but while, okay, so while he's saying that, he's talking about how they scurry around from little, a hole the size of a quarter, and his... Yeah, they squeeze through it, yeah. His secretary, Lori, p picks her feet up off the floor, and he's saying they're stringy like chicken. And the uh, grits guy, he stops, he spits his food out. <laughs> Everyone else is just staring at him like mouth agape. Let me tell you something right now. If I put Eobard in a in a box with a quarter size hole in it, um, he's staying in the box. There's no there's no way his fat ass is getting through that hole. I don't know. Is that is that a real thing? I didn't double check these facts. Okay, so here's the thing. Like if like if he's saying that if you take a rat and put it in front of a hole as t the size of a quarter, 
at some point, that animal is probably going to find a way to make that hole bigger. Uh, yeah, I think that's what he means. Because they're intelligent, and they do have teeth that are designed to just break shit apart. Well, they can chew through fucking lead, so of course they can open that hole up. They eat concrete! They're, they're like, known to eat concrete. I saw an episode of The Thousand Ways to Die, remember that show? Oh, yeah. Where, like, some bank robber or some shit got stuck in a fucking pipe, and these rats ate through his body. Oh. Yeah, there's, um, there's an old torture method where they would basically take a rat, put it in a pot, put the pot against your chest and heat the pot up and when the rat oh you saw game of thrones too <laughs> no that no 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 that is ba no game i know yeah yeah george R. R. martin's a big history nerd so he stole that from you know things we used to do to actual people or if if, or if you read the american psycho novel too yeah yeah exactly so when the rat realizes one direction is ow hot metal and the other direction is soft flesh it goes through the soft flesh sure especially the eyes <laughs> <laughs> Rat teeth also don't really stop growing, which is why you have to get them stuff to chew on when you have one. And that's why they also incessantly chew on things. Yes, they do mention that. Yeah, but uh, I also want to add to this uh, this a uh, fun fact about the bubonic plague. Genghis Khan made that all the worse by taking plague-ridden bodies and hurling them over the gates of port cities with catapults and just letting them explode on ships as they were trying to flee the cities. Gotta love them, right? Good old, good old Genghis Khan. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, John. Also, I think, like, what is it, like, five and ten males in any given room are all related to Genghis Khan because he just, like, murdered and molested his way across all of Europe and Asia? Yeah, you know how he did that? John Hurt blew a fucking hole in the sky. Yeah! <laughs> yeah. He did! He totally did! <laughs> <laughs> that's how he's like time warping through all these places. That's why we're all related to Genghis Khan. You, know? you just hear that laughing in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's John Wayne. <laughs> oh God, let's not go down that rabbit hole again. How are you doing there, Pilgrim? I'm Genghis Khan. <laughs> oh no, it's true. When John Wayne played Genghis Khan, isn't that the movie they filmed near like a uh, atomic? Uh, testing zone and they like all got cancer yeah and the, all the rats survived and all the and then all the people died yeah so even in death Genghis Khan is still killing people that's <laughs> yeah. pretty impressive so so yeah so he goes home and he checks his metal traps and it, it didn't take any of the bait um and then you see this thing like traveling through the air ducts also this thing like frequently fucks with his shit like it knocks over um pictures and like rips up papers and stuff and then he goes to see Cleet again oh no he, he oh no he goes to see the junkyard the the, the fucking the 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 second hand store owner or whatever the fuck this guy is yeah I don't know what this guy is. He just has like a, a shot full of bullshit. I don't understand it either. Uh, yeah, he's like, he's like, oh yeah, those rats are bad. They, they're gonna take over New York City, and them teeth they just keep growing and growing. They gotta bite shit like lead and concrete, like we said before. And he's like drinking out of a skull. It's weird. Yeah, it's like a little skull cup. What the fuck is that? Well, I think Melinda's in the back there eating uh, something out of a tuna can. I'm not really sure. Oh yeah, it's Rumple Stiltskin's on a shelf back there. Dick Miller's in the corner going on about some Joker ordering silver bullets and and Ray's answering the phone about a fucking I don't even know what some kind of book somebody ordered <laughs> some back order they're, they're all in this one store somehow they don't ever interact with each other but they're all there at the same time yeah well, welcome to the MDU store of or, uh, unorganized shit of mystical wonders yeah <laughs> oh Merlin's outside okay <laughs> well no his shop is just to the left but yeah he's like okay yeah I got two different types of poison he's like all right you want the one that makes the rat bleed all over your shit or the one that makes it run into water Peter Weller's like no nah, I don't want that fucking thing bleeding all over over my house. <laughs> then this other, this guy is so sick. He's like, he's like, yeah, you know what happens when you give him this shit? Yeah, you fucking, you, you, you close all your toilets and don't leave any water out because this motherfucker's gonna run right to the sewer and drinks himself to death. He'll just pop. He'll just drink all that water and pop. Is that true? Is there any truth to that? I don't know. Is it true? I have no fucking idea. <laughs> Listeners, look this shit up for us and then fact check us and then post it in the comments, please. Like the weirdest medication we have at like my hospital is called Forbid, and it's designed to make poop taste worse so your dog won't eat it. <laughs> huh. Now, now really digest that sentence. It's forbidden. <laughs> digest, huh? I, I see what you did there. I know. Well, you don't have poison. You don't have poisons directly to kill things at your hospital. No. First of all, if you're designing uh, poisons to kill rodents that are... That go to that length to be cruel, uh, you're just psychotic. Yeah. Uh, right? Wouldn't it just, like, attack the nervous system and they would just die? That or you are the doctor from Dead Alive who's secretly an SS officer. Yeah! <laughs> who's disguised as a veterinarian. Oh, it's an SS experiment? Yeah. What are, you, what are you talking about? I don't carry sedatives. You got to try <laughs> this poison. It makes you drink until you pop. Tranquilizers, I do have. <laughs> Rat poison? I do have. I have this one poison. It dehydrates 
them so badly they want to drink themselves to death. They're like a walking hemorrhage. He just looks at the rat and he says, you are dead inside my mind. <laughs> oh no, now he's Russian? Oh my god, he's Alexander. I have already killed you, rat. <laughs> I've already killed you, rat. So the, he, he, he pours this shit all over his house and then I guess he forgot that major detail the guy at the store said not to open anything that has water in it. Because in the middle of the night, he's got to take a leak, and he opens the toilet, and this fucking rat's like, Aah! Yeah. Oh, dude, he tries to bite his dick off. He freaks out. You did this to me. <laughs> I'm thirsty. Uh, he just about has a stroke. He's like, oh, what are you? He's like leaning on the side of his fucking bathroom wall. Dude, if you opened your fucking toilet and a rat jumped down at you. Oh, sure. Especially when you're half asleep. Yeah. I opened my trash can, saw a possum, and almost fucking passed out once. Like, <laughs> there you go. Real quick, this poison is distributed by... Putting it in the corners of... He, he's setting this out like it's for ants or some shit. Like, it's... He, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Like, it's not in a food or anything? Look, like, okay, so for as obsessed as Wilward gets over this, like, all of his attempts to get rid of this rat are fucking half measures. Like, he's like... He just, like... He might as well have taken this box, like, ripped it open, like, just ripped it in half in the middle of his living room and just let it fly everywhere and go, good enough. <laughs> and then he passes out. <laughs> He just, like, shovels it all over the place? Yeah, he's like, whatever. Right before- I think there was a scene before this, but he, like, finds a fucking rat hair in his bread. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was weird. That was disgusting. So, by the way, I think this is the same scene where, uh, they, they do this real subtle thing. And, again, I, I don't think they were being funny on purpose. I think they meant this. He's reading Moby Dick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And then later in the movie, he's watching, I think, The Old Man in the Sea, where he's fighting with the... Yeah. I'm like, is this the filmmaker being like, this is our version of Moby Dick, a man versus a rat in his fucking... <laughs> I think it is. I think so. Well, and then at any cost, he has to destroy it, right? No matter what? Y yeah. But it's like, <laughs> there's a big difference between Moby Dick and a rat. Yeah. Oh, no. Sure, sure, sure. I picked up on The Old Man in the Sea movie when he was watching it because I... Uh, I also detest the story of the old man in the sea because I think it's dumb, boring, and pointless. <laughs> Spoilers. Okay. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. I love when he has that copy of Moby Dick. Like he's that he's not even really reading. He's just trying to like distract from the noise of the rat chewing on something yeah. inside the walls. And then he's like, All right, ah, okay. And he stands like on his desk and starts smashing the ceiling with this fat <laughs> book. I just imagine him being like, Call me. That's it. Like <laughs> Three words in. And by this point, like, the the rat has also, like, ripped up a bunch of pillows and shit in his closet. <laughs> yeah. He's, oh, that's what he says. Before he fucking s smacks it on the ceiling, he's like, I, I tell you, I tell you what. This is when he starts losing his shit because he's like, yeah, keep it up. I got friends in Jersey, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get that one. I was like, wait, what? The mafia. Yeah, you're already in New York. It's not like you're like in Rhode Island or some shit. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. New York looks a hell of a lot like Montreal, <laughs> Canada. It does, yeah, especially if you're from Crystal Lake. Uh, he goes back to see Cleet now. And he's like, he's like, those fucking traps you gave me didn't work or whatever. And he's like, he's like, rats are smart. Your, your blue eyes will go right through your fucking blue eyes. Come here, I gotta tell you something. He's like, come in the basement. <laughs> I forgot to tell you, my grandma made those traps. I'm sorry, they're bad. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, what do you use for bait, huh? And he's like, uh, lamb chops. He's like, what? Well, yeah, that's no good. You gotta use fucking bacon, brother. And, and, and the gloves. Don't forget the fucking gloves. And he's like, yeah. You didn't say anything about gloves. He's like, nah, man. You gotta wear the fucking gloves, or else they smell you. You're fucking it up. Lamb chop? Did your grandma make those? <laughs> Leftovers in the fridge? Um, and this is where he's like, hey, did you check the boiler room? He's like, huh. You know what? No, I didn't. He's like, yeah, but it's in the boiler room. Hey, and if it's a female, uh, it's extra uh, violent, so just keep that in mind. He's like, huh. Okay. <laughs> the, the secondhand store guy says that. He's like, yeah, they're twice as aggressive. Oh, right. Then we get a bunch of scenes of him like at work, and he's just like falling asleep. He's like, <laughs> he's not doing his fucking job, and like this is a huge account like for the company, and like his the boss his boss has like put all of this faith in him uh with this thing and he's just like letting this fucking rat business get to him yeah he's just researching rats when he's supposed to be doing his job and he's calling all the exterminators like not one fucking exterminator in this whole city gets back to me i don't i don't understand then he does head into that boiler room sure does and we have this i don't know why this was like a thing in the 80s but he has a model house of the house i like that a lot the winter stepfather program is vast okay <laughs> I like the the symb the symbolism with the house and later when we get to it later. I'm into it. By the way, I recently watched Amityville Dollhouse, so I was just getting flashbacks to that movie. Oh yeah. There you go. 
Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, maybe it was maybe it was a rat that was possessing it. Who know? You know, I don't know. Maybe it could be. <laughs> then he like goes to like eat some of his food, and like all of the fucking food in his pantry has been ripped open, and he just like falls down defeated, and all of this like oatmeal falls on his head and shit. Something pours on his head for like forty five seconds, and he just sits there and just like gets covered in some kind of powder. Right, right. So like Sean said, he's in this fucking basement looking, or the boiler room rather, looking for the rat and like he finds the drain that it must have come out of he's like he's like oh that's real groovy i bet that's how you did it didn't you you came out through the fucking sewer hole (laughs) and then he finds this nest and there's a bunch of there's four four baby uh rats in there yeah they were gonna be raised by a turtle who knew ninjutsu yeah yes i was talking to sean and we were we were we were trying to put the pieces together here for the mdu and uh we thought splinter's getting his dick wet with this (laughs) queen rat yeah. And those are his kids. Sadly, Peter Weller uh, wait, wait. handles these things very poorly. Oh, my God. This is why he raises four baby turtles instead of four baby rats, because he tried once, and some asshole in an apartment fucking murdered, murdered his babies. Right. Well, now he doesn't have to pay child support, so he's all good. <laughs> this is the reason. Okay, so the rat sees him, like, and jumps at him from a pipe. Yeah. And he gets startled, and he drops this, like, cardboard with these rat babies, and they fall in, like, a sewer drain. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, the rest of the movie, the way it goes is because of this fucking scene. You killed this thing's babies, and now it wants revenge. You know, Richard Harris shows up. <laughs> yeah. He's like, it's a revenge killing! Can you commit a sin against a rat? <laughs> Uh, yes, he does, because he drops these four newborn babies and is like, well, fuck, and just doesn't react to it, like, at all. (laughs) Well, I mean, he doesn't really get a chance to react, because this thing starts biting the fuck out of his leg. Yeah, well, yeah. This scene should have happened way earlier. Yes. Because up until this point... The rat's just being an asshole. Like, I, I I texted Joe earlier. I'm like, this seems like the gritty reboot of Mouse Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> like, it seems like Mouse... Like, the rat has no reason to purposely go after and fuck with this guy. Right, it has no agency until now. Like, it's not just doing normal rat things. Like, it's trying to fuck with this guy. Sure. Like, yeah, the, the rat's just being a rat, and, like, now it's, like, now it's fucking personal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. But, like, what if he would have killed these baby rats earlier... I would have maybe bought into some of the stuff it was doing earlier in the movie. But now I'm just like, well, fuck you, rat. You're kind of an asshole. <laughs> right. Like if it was the first 15 minutes, he's like when the rat first shows up and he starts like going around his house and he finds them. Like, yeah, yeah I kind of yeah. like that better. Right. Or, he, yeah, he goes directly to the boiler, right? Yeah. In the beginning, that would have made sense. Yeah. So he goes back to work again. There's a lot of back and forth from work to the house, but there is a couple things we want to establish, too. Like, so he's talking to his boss and... uh his bo- this is the first time his boss is like, hey, you look like shit. Uh, you better figure it out, kiddo. And he's like, okay, I will. Pacing. Pacing's the key. I got to figure this shit out at home, and then I'll be I'll be all straightened up, okay? Uh, All the scenes where he goes to work to talk to people, you would safely assume that everyone pre-games on Robitussin before they start reading off their fucking lines. <laughs> <laughs> They're so sedate and just like dead when all these scenes are happening because it's, just, it's also these like drab, lifeless, like, yeah, that's an office. Maybe, maybe we set it up like an office and it was something else entirely. But it's also like that thing where it's like, well, if he fails, we win. Yeah, grits and fucking stuffy nose guy are like, I hope he fucks this up because I want that account. Yeah. Windham Earl from Twin Peaks, he, that evil <laughs> bastard, he's waiting. He's waiting for him to fuck up. I know. It's true. It's like uh, like the American Psycho stuff where they like talk about the business cards, but like without any like satire or comedy to it whatsoever. It's just like, yeah, these are deathly serious business talking scenes that go on for five minutes at a time. If I fuck this up, Paul Allen's gonna get the account and then I gotta dissolve his body in a bathtub in Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> this guy would be friends with Patrick Bateman. Listen, I gotta go to Dorsey, okay? Yeah, I, I, I gotta meet him with David Bowie any minute now. He's gonna walk <laughs> in, he's gonna start <laughs> explaining something and then he's just gonna disappear for, th- for 22 years. Yeah. Do you know who this is there? See, you're going across the sixth dimension. I gotta go become a teapot in the Re- the reboot, okay? <laughs> yeah. Kind of love that. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> oh, I do too. I think it's the fucking best way to use David Bowie without having to use David Bowie. Yeah. We're not going to talk about the rat. We're not going to talk about the rat at all. He never tells anybody that he's fucking with this rat. Like, he has this rat problem. Yeah. What is with that? Yeah. Invite some of them over. Be like, hey, guys, I really need help trying to kill this rat. Uh, can, can you guys come over and we'll get we'll get some baseball bats? <laughs> 
a rat posse? I'm losing sleep. I can't. I can't get anything done. The problem is the movie would then be resolved because a bunch of like level-headed people would show up and be like, "Dude, I got it." <laughs> you, well, yeah, it's dead. Here you go. Yeah. Um. But yeah, then we get that scene. We've been kind of dancing around this whole episode where him and his secretary they go to his house and she's got to get some paperwork and. Uh, I really do not understand why this scene is in the movie at all. Uh, it seems to be there just to simply justify the existence of this character's screen time for the rest of the film. Because after this, her importance is, is like, demoted to, like, Oh my god, Bart, are you okay? And then she just, like, walks away. Yeah, get, get, out, get, of out, of <laughs> get out of the movie. You fucking leave now. Fuck, fuck off. Fuck off. Get away from me. Yeah, this scene is, like, so weird. She's like, hey, what's what's going on with your family? He's like, oh, my son's great, but my wife. And then he dances around it, and then he makes out with her, which I thought was weird. Yeah, what the fuck with that? And it's not even like he's a slimy, shitty business guy who just wants to sleep around. No. Also known as cool guys. But, uh, yeah, he's not one of those cool guys. He's just like, he's like, oh, I'm a family man, and uh, I think I'm going to make out with you now. It's like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> Isn't this what I'm supposed to do because I'm a businessman? Yeah, if he was acting like that earlier, I'm like, okay, all right. It's like Mad Men or something, but he's not like that. Right. Maybe he's a scumbag in the book. Who knows? Yeah, maybe the rat is just really... By the way, I appreciate that the rat uh, values the sanctity of marriage and stops him from cheating on his wife. I... <laughs> yeah. Despite the fact this man <laughs> killed her children, she she's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Is infanticide not enough? for you <laughs> <laughs> so then she fucks out of the movie for a while oh my god she hears the rat and he's like and she's like what is that he's like house sounds yeah i guess question mark it's ambient it's an ambient record i bought <laughs> when she leaves i couldn't believe this next part he just sees a cat oh. hanging by his door and he's like all right well this cat's mine now and then he just picks up the stray cat and kisses it yeah. And he's just rubbing it all over himself. And then he brings it in. He's like, oh, my wife's allergic to cats. And he's putting it on the countertops and stuff. And it's like, what the, the? I feel like you just introduced a new problem into your house. Yeah. I mean, is that his big complaint? Is that, oh, my wife doesn't let me have a cat. This fucking asshole. No, he's like, oh, yeah, maybe, right? He's like, he's like, oh, you want a job, pussy cat? Well, no, he says, I used to be the cat king. I used to love cats, but I can't have them anymore because my wife's allergic. But, like, I would not pick up a cat off the street no and I, even if i even if for some reason i was gonna do that i'm surprised it didn't like tear a, a chunk of flesh out of his arm well sure yeah never mind that like th th here's the thing uh like after bringing this cat in i'm surprised there's like not a scene later on he's like sorry i exposed the entire apartment to feline leukemia virus <laughs> <laughs> well it's not it's not an, it's not an apartment it's a big ass house yeah or like feline or like feline distemper or some fucking you know awful street disease these cats get oh also, does he does he have a litter? I don't think he has a litter box. Oh no, it's shitting all over the place. He just brings a cat into his house and he's like, "Go be a cat," and he just walks away. It's totally the neighbor's cat, dude. This thing is like well fed and it's gro well groomed. It's just like, okay, I guess I'll go eat, drink some milk at Peter Wella's house. Here's some two week old oysters. Okay, this is what rich people eat. Here you go, kitty. Yeah, the, <laughs> the cat doesn't try to run away from him. It doesn't no. like snarl at him or anything. It's just like cool as a cucumber. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take care. Of this rat problem, Mr. Weller, no problem. There's a there's there's a couple of scenes where like you see the cat and you see the rat vision and you're like, oh shit, something's gonna happen. But they don't they just fuck with you for a little while. How insane would it be if like the rat goes to court on the cat and suddenly the cat opens his mouth and a second meaner cat comes out of its face? Oh. <laughs> and suddenly you're in the uninvited and it's it's a fucking crossover. Dude, uninvited versus of unknown origin? Sign me up for that. Of unknown uninvited. Of <laughs> unknown uninvited origin. Yeah. Well, the, the uninvited cat is John Hurt's cat. Right. And the rat is GVD. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, we're at an impasse. They just walk away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said, uh, and our uh, animals are, uh, are evil animals. <laughs> so he just like starts talking to the rat like out of nowhere. And he's like, he's like, you know, this town isn't big enough for the both of us. You know, I, I've been to college and I tried dope. I, I tried some of those things. I've had DSL. Yeah, I did it. What? I'm very, I'm very clearly losing my fucking mind. And he just starts drinking his ass off. Meanwhile, the rat's like in the wall, just like shitting itself and staring like into space, like <laughs> just what rats do. Like, <laughs> and it's not paying attention to anything he's saying. Like, oh, that's nice. The the rat is already pregnant with another rat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, yeah. He's like housing this fucking bottle of J&B and then just starts staring off into the distance. And you hear, like, kids laughing. And I'm like, does this motherfucker have the DTs or what's going on? <laughs> and then it just kind of shifts into this dream. Yeah. His kid is, like, having a birthday party. Yeah. And they have this fucking cake out on the thing and, the, and they're like okay happy birthday Peter here you go blow out your candles and then this fucking mother fucking rat comes bursting through this cake and everybody starts losing their minds and then Peter will wakes up and goes I should really stop doing the DMT but he like wakes up in a different room yeah like in his kids room yeah it's weird he should stop doing the DMT now this this next part really confused me Joe maybe you know something about this um I noticed that the cat has now left the apartment and for some reason, the rat has found a very cheap dummy of another cat <laughs> and left the dummy and chewed up the dummy. I don't know why it found this stuffed cat and chewed it up and left it. I don't know where the original cat went. Can you explain that to me? You didn't mention the note he left, which said cat dead. Details later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, and Herbert West left it there, dude. Yeah. I saw that cat. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. They, they, couldn't, uh. they couldn't get a better looking cat. Yeah, it's pretty bad. But like, I love that scene because like he like he's like, man, that was a crazy night of drinking. You know what I need? Milk. Milk. <laughs> and he like pours himself a glass of milk, and like blood starts dripping into it, and he looks up and just loses his shit. I thought for like half a second there was like rat turds in the milk. I was like, ugh. <laughs> All of his moments where he just comes unhinged are the funniest fucking things because I don't know what it is about how he screams, but he's never like, it's hard to describe. He's like, like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Peter Weller special, dude. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just real quick, we missed a scene because, like, I just want to talk about this because I thought it was, I thought it was kind of interesting. He like, he like stacks a bunch of books against the door and like on the toilet and shit, but the rat still gets in and like, yeah, somehow goes inside his mattress. That's when it chews through the ceiling, right? Not yet. He they, he does it twice. First, he like pulls the blankets off of him and like fucks with his telephone. Yeah. It climbs through the mattress and we get that POV shot that looks awesome. It's really cool. Um, and the rat like goes to bite him and like runs out the fucking door and uh, he ends up like sleeping in an armchair the entire night yeah <laughs> like with his feet curled up yeah in the fetal position <laughs> yeah and then he gets the bloody milk but like this guy he's got like massive uh, sleep deprivation and and like stress anxiety problems so like his whole world is falling apart I'm sure he also has a violent case of the shits like that too <laughs> he's just going from booze to milk like are you kidding me dude like <laughs> oh yeah he's got he's on liquid diet by the way like I feel like he should have been like hey cleat you want to just live in my house for a week and take care of this rat? I'm going to go to a hotel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Since he's the expert, supposedly. Like, Cleet would have been like, or Cletus, whatever his name would have been like, oh my God, that's great. Yeah, I could, I'll sleep at your place and kill this rat. Oh, shit. Yeah, sure. Can I drink you expensive booze, too? Okay. He's like, do whatever the fuck you want. I got I to gotta actually do work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can stare at the lady in the next building. Yeah. I can see the rest of her body besides just her legs. I, I stole your binoculars. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> so then he uh, finally gets in touch with an exterminator and it's it's kind of implied that this guy's further away than the other ones he contacted. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, okay, uh, I'm going to leave the extra key under the this spot on the on the steps and uh, checks under the record player. Okay, so this is where the movie does the orca thing where now you're like, am I dealing with a fantastical creature who can now understand? I couldn't believe this. Understand <laughs> human speech, which is funny because like, Tony just said, like, five minutes ago, this thing may as well be hiding the walls, just like, Bleh! just, like, fucking pissing and shitting itself. <laughs> and, like, just, like, cleaning its fucking tail and just being an animal. And now it's, like, huh, and making these complicated plans based on eavesdropping. I could not believe this. Like, this isn't Monkey Shines, for crying out loud. Yeah. It eats and sleeps and makes little rats. That's all it does, Martin, okay? But, yeah, the, the fucking rat... The, Peter Weller comes home. He calls the exterminator. He's like, I paid you and you didn't do anything. And they're like, we showed up and there was a ripped up check. <laughs> and it's like, wait, the rat ripped up the check, but enough <laughs> to show that it was still a check and then left it in the yeah. exact same spot <laughs> and then left. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, that's too smart. It's an act of... You could even hear the guy on the other side of the line like, Yeah, I don't do any free work, asshole. Yeah, it, it's also one of those things where, like, the rat, like, lifts up the LP, like, cover, takes the check, and then pl places it back down. Like, it's not even wrecked or anything. Like, this rat actually lifted it up, took it out, and, and put the lid back down. It's an unbridled act of spite. <laughs> If I remember right, the guy said he saw the check ripped up, right? No, he goes, he goes, there was no fucking check, asshole. He's like, oh, okay. Either way, yeah. how do you come to this guy's house? Let, let, let's say you don't see the check, just for the sake of argument. 
You see, this place is a fucking wreck. You, you like get paid? I don't know. I guess he, he, maybe he's been ripped off too many times. This is New York. Could be. He ain't got time for that shit. He's got too many jobs. And anyway, the rat's in the fucking piano. And uh... <laughs> by, by the way, if I went to this guy's house as the exterminator, and he let me in, and I see a piano and how big the house is and whatnot. <laughs> if I don't see the check, I, you know what? I'm just gonna right. I'm just gonna do the job anyway. Sure. And then maybe give him a call, leave a message to his secretary, secretary, be like, "Hey, uh, we didn't, we couldn't find the check. It wasn't where you said it was. Right. Please mail it to us soon. Like, like I'm going into that house, seeing all the stuff. I'm like, all right, this guy probably has money. I don't think he meant to rip me off. Sure. sure. But yeah, then this is where he's watching the old man in the sea. Yeah. And he, oh, actually, first he gets the cleats and the baseball bat out because he's fucking had enough. And then he watches old man in the sea. He's like, you want a fucking war, motherfucker? Well, it's in his bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it looks like a fucking cat getting in there with him. I know. Okay. This is, this is where you see the enormity of this fucking rat because it's like, it's a big motherfuck in that. It's a gigantic lump that's like crawling around underneath the fucking covers, man. It's the size of a critter. Like, and I mean like a crate. Yeah. yeah. I thought he fell asleep again, to be quite honest. I thought this was another dream sequence. He goes to hit it with the fucking bat and it like runs out of the It runs from under the covers and runs out of the room. He's like, motherfuck. He's like, you want a war? <laughs> this is the part in the movie where I was like desperately hoping for some kind of like insane twist because by now I'm like, this is just. It's, it's very samey to me. Uh, yeah. I was hoping when he swung this bat, the rat, like, caught it with its hand. It was like, no, 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 and, like, throws him across the room. <laughs> <laughs> or, like, bites it in half, right? Yeah, it chisels it down with its teeth. It just, like, spins like a corn cob. Yeah. So, he has officially lost his shit, and he's, like, not in... He's, he doesn't go to work that day, I think. And the secretary's like, oh, where the fuck is he, or whatever. <laughs> and... She, like, ends up going to his house. She she rummages through his desk, takes his fucking house keys, goes to the house, opens the door, and just lets herself in. She's like, she's like, hello, Bert, are you home? And that's it. And then she just proceeds to sneak around his fucking house in the middle of the night. She's the first of two people to do this. Yes. Yeah. Just anyone can come in. Yeah. And he's like, uh, she gets in the basement and, and is looking around. And of course, whenever this woman's here, other than, you know, when, you know, interrupt the uh, adultery. Yeah, yeah. But otherwise, this rat's nowhere to be seen when she's on the in the movie. Well, it's because he has no beef with her. She has no beef with her. I'm sorry. No. Well, sure. Uh, she sees Peter Weller at the top of the steps in his burglar outfit with this fucking bat just sitting there in the fetal position again. <laughs> He's like, yeah. Time for you to go. Leave. Bitches, leave. <laughs> <laughs> and she does. She leaves. I was waiting so much for, like, this chick to, like, step on that fucking trap because there's, like, a fake out. I know. Yeah. That would have been a good one. And then she's like, what are you, a fucking maniac? You live in bad traps all over your house. What's going on here? Oh, you mean, you mean, you mean at this point in the movie you were hoping for some kind of stakes? Yeah, me too. Yeah. Well, c well, because she leaves and it's still not established what he's even doing. He's just being a fucking weirdo. It's not established what she's doing. I'm not sure why she still exists in this movie. Well, yeah. I'm so concerned even though you're married and I love you or whatever. <laughs> question mark i wish i lived in this beautiful brownstone i mean it's kind of like you know we talked about it a little bit in this episode his name came up but like kind of like lawnmower man where dr angelo has that you know downward spiral at the beginning of that film it's kind of that moment for peter weller sure but i mean he watches his monkey get murdered in front of him so i don't know uh, it's i mean i'm not saying it's a one-to-one -one, but <laughs> cyborg man takes one for the team and fucking pierce Brosnan goes on a tirade i think it was a uh it was a chimpanzee which is an ape thank you very much oh excuse me <laughs> yes yes i would also love if the secretary just came up to him she's like i'm leaving and i'm upset because you never take me to the city and she just leaves <laughs> yeah! Oh my god! Your wife's out of town and you're not taking me out on the town. Make sure you give uh, Chimparachi his uh, due diligence. <laughs> His due diligence. Uh, but but I bring that up because like up until this point, he still at least is like putting the suit on with the intention of going to work. But now he's just wearing like a fucking vest and like you know sweatpants, and he's like working out in his basement. Oh, he's fucking broken, dude. Yeah, he's doing fucking like uh, uh, sit ups and he's hitting softballs against the fucking boiler room door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's in his kitchen. Just like hitting the so like, dude, you have a big house. Go outside. Go it against the wall. Like, <laughs> well, he's fucking with the rat, man. 
I guess. Oh, oh, is he just trying? I thought he was just trying to relieve stress. I didn't realize he was trying to do noise complaints for the rat. <laughs> <laughs> Two birds, one stone. Yeah, there you go. Also, at what point does the rat just leave? Like, why is the rat so dead set on being all this? Ha- like, yeah, it's cozy. Heads over to Cleet's apartment. Yeah. She's like, I'm 16 babies removed from that litter. Like, come on, I'm over this. Do you know how hard it is to find good housing? <laughs> oh, I guess. But like, just. Why don't you just, like, go to the sewer for a bit? I mean, meet a nice man rat, and then, uh... Splinter's available, I've heard. And then I came across a giant queen rat, <laughs> and I married her. <laughs> Twice. So then he's, like, still working on this report in his room. He's eating, like, Chinese or some shit. And, uh, the power finally goes out, and he's like, huh... That took longer than I thought. Finally happened. Uh, I love his descent where, like, he's such a perfectionist and he, like, you know, not even a picture frame could be out of place or whatever. And now he's, like, eating, like, sloppy fucking mashed potatoes on his bed and, like, throwing pickles around his room and shit. Yeah. Oh, is that what it was? I thought it was a fucking egg roll that he just tosses on the floor. No, it was a pickle. All right. Well, you know, this VHS, <laughs> I gotta say, this 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 copy that, that I watched, pretty fucking grainy and, and with a massive uh, brown overtone. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Yeah. Did you, did you watch it on a 4K TV? That's the best way to watch VHS rips. Yeah. <laughs> I love that I got this TV and I was like, yeah, maybe I'll upgrade to like a Blu-ray player, like a 4K Blu-ray player and I watch all these cool movies and now I'm watching Frankenstein Unbound and Of Unknown Origin VHS rips. Don't feel bad, Tony. <laughs> uh, I once tried to play GoldenEye on an HD TV and I was like, oh, well, this is impossible. And I just turned the N64 off and I haven't touched it ever since. Ouch. It was, it was like, oh, yeah, I love seeing things that are like 320p blown up to like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> extra grain. Yeah. So the rat cuts the power, and he finally just loses his shit. He's like, son of a bitch, here we go. He goes downstairs to go fix the fuse or whatever the fuck. Everybody dies. (laughs) And, uh... This thing fucking takes out his ankle, like, from from under the stairs? This thing fucks him up royally in this scene. Yeah. Oh, dude, it fucking scratches him all up, bites his fucking throat, scratches his chest and shit. Yeah. And he rushes out of the basement and, like... Okay. Slams it in the fucking door. He could have killed it right here. Yeah. I don't know. The head is like in between the door and him and he like pushes it behind the door. Just crush its fucking head in the door. Like, come on. (laughs) Uh, Honestly, yeah. Like he had it in a position where like if he had closed that door just a little harder, this whole problem would be solved. Yeah. And he, or he could have just, like, stepped on its head or whatever. He would have decapitated that thing. So, I know he needs to see because the power's out, and so he decides to just light these candles all over the fucking house, but, like... It looks like he's trying to summon uh, uh, Esteban, all right? <laughs> yeah, maybe. He he needs the powers of hell to defeat this thing. Yeah. <laughs> he calls Clint Howard to deal with the rat. Uh, I can't help you, sorry. Yeah, or or Ron from, from the uh, rat pit. Clint Howard shows up with his fucking claymore and, like, levitates to the house. He's like, I'll find that rat for you. Uh, <laughs> he's like, all right, it's your house, but, it, you know, if, 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 you, you use the bat and you lose and the rat's gonna lose or whatever. You win, you get the house. You win, you get the house. <laughs> now fight! <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you're right, Joe. I don't know if this is where you were going with that, but it's like you set all these candles up and this rat's constantly knocking shit over. You're just gonna burn your fucking house down. It's a fucking fire hazard in this war zone. What are you talking about? He's causing more problems than he has. Like, it's... Yeah, right. So he goes in and, like, the rat, like, went and, like, ripped up all of his fucking work that he's been working on for the past two weeks. <laughs> yeah, so then what's his solution? Let me go to work looking like a fucking bum, and his boss is like, hey, uh, uh, don't let the staff see you looking like this. He's like, no, seriously, if anybody sees you looking like this, you're, you're shit canned, like, straight up. He's like, I gotta take care of some shit, Elliot. When I'm done, I'll finish the report, and if you want to give it to someone else, I don't care. Go for it. <laughs> Long and short is, it's a matter of priorities with me. Catch you later. I will say, like, his his boss and his job handles this, like, this needless life crisis pretty well. <laughs> They're like, you look like shit. Don't let me see you. By the way, keep keep up all the good work. <laughs> So much so that this guy pushes back the big meeting and he's like, okay, you got an extra two weeks there, bucko. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we're rooting for you there, kid. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, they'd people be like, get the fuck out of here. Here. This reminds me of like, wasn't there like an episode of Seinfeld where George is like, tr- oh yeah, George is trying to get fired from the Yankees and it just doesn't work. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> He's doing everything in his power to get fired and they just won't fire him. Exactly. Well, you know, George Costanza, he's always either trying to get hired or fired in that show. Yeah. I don't understand this part because like he's going to look for the traps and he put one in the dollhouse 
And he's like, ah, it's not where I put it. I guess it moved it or whatever. The rat moved it! Yeah. So, but he's still feeling around blindly, and guess what happens? The fucking, this metal bear trap fucking cr- crashes on his fucking hand, and he, like, freaks the fuck out like you do. <laughs> yeah, why doesn't he just put a flashlight in there and just see where it is? Instead of, like, taking his hand out of it and, like, going to, like, just fix it immediately, like, he takes the time to go grab the bottle of J&B <laughs> and then go to the bathroom and then put peroxide on it. He has a nervous break. Oh, yeah. Like, after this. Like, he has a complete psychotic meltdown. I don't know what he's doing. So he gets this hand trapped, caught in the trap, just bleeding everywhere, cleans out the sink, and then he just turns the bath on. Well, because it probably hurts like a motherfucker. And then gets inside of it with his clothes on. We, uh, yeah, starts, just climbs in. And chugging the booze. And just starts drinking the bottle of Jim Bean, and then just fucking passes out with a with a bathtub filled with water. I'm like, this is his fucking suicide. That I'm going to watch a man die. <laughs> <laughs> He's... Like, but I'm telling you one thing. He's getting fucking trench foot, dude. He's sleeping in that fucking tub for eight hours. <laughs> yeah. With socks on. <laughs> so then he has another uh, dream. Uh, this dream's fucking weird. Yeah, this, I thought this was, I didn't realize this was a dream at first. No, me either. And th- Which sucks because this was the most suspenseful thing in the goddamn movie. It really was. I 100% agree. I thought this was going to be the twist. I thought this was going to be the moment they realized, they revealed, like, <laughs> he's just having some kind of weird work-induced psychotic break and there's no fucking rat. There is no rat yeah and that like what was about to happen was he's so delirious that he's just worried about like oh my god boobies <laughs> in all fairness they were shannon tweets boobies a lot of people like those boobies well his his absolute fucking idiot of a son is in the kitchen like singing to himself just pouring himself a bowl of like <laughs> narcotics and carcinogens and he's about to just consume it in a like, big fucking swirly we, we didn't really talk about it earlier but in the beginning when he's making a mess that is what he does he's just like making his breakfast out of like shit on the counter <laughs> he's making cereal in the beginning but i can't fucking stand it when a little kid like pours cereal all over the fucking place and then like pours the milk all over the place like he you know you're making a mess you're not an idiot i was just incredibly triggered when the kid starts this scene and he pours milk into a bowl first i'm like what are you doing <laughs> oh yeah he just like pours milk into this fucking thing and then dumps a bunch of sugar into it and then pours both kinds of poison into this fucking thing and then like mixes it all together <laughs> yeah just grabs a spoon he's like tra la 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 so not only will he want to drink enough water until he explodes but he'll be bleeding all over the furniture the entire time too <laughs> yeah well there you do <laughs> there you go all while on a sugar high as well and uh like you guys were talking about his wife's there like and they're about you know do the deed and uh, the rat comes out of fucking nowhere he's gonna do the deed with tweed (laughs) oh there you go (laughs) yeah that sounds like the name of a sex tape (laughs) (laughs) i mean it probably was right Uh, yeah It probably is, you're right. Right in that right in that pocket of like when she was doing scandalous, maybe. Yeah. A little Skinamax classic. By the way, before I'm sorry, not to go on a sidetrack, but uh for for a short period I don't know, I just remembered this. For a short period of time I, I, I drove a truck for a shady municipal supply company that I think was ripping off nursing homes, but anyway. You need a medical supply. <laughs> the warehouse that they uh were based in only had one toilet in, like, a broken-down building. Ugh. And uh, when I went there, the toilet seat was broken, and on top of it was a Playboy with Shannon Tweed on it from, like, the 90s. <laughs> huh. And this was in 2014. <laughs> and I recognized Shannon Tweed. I'm like, wow, that's been in here for a really long time. And then I, <laughs> <laughs> and then I quit the job shortly afterwards. <laughs> Sure. Ew. That's what did it. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. Yeah. <laughs> yep. There you go. I am. I imagine you trying to remove that magazine from that toilet seat would just like. I did not. Would rip the whole building down. <laughs> like you're gonna pick it up and just like the toilet comes out of the ground. Like 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 the ring of the toilet seat was like broken and it was sharp and jagged. Oh. Ugh. And my boss was like, "Yeah, I just squat on top of it." I'm like, "What the fuck?" I'm like, "I know I'm broke and desperate for money, but this is too much." <laughs> Why not just replace the fucking toilet? Oh, dude. These these are the same people that maybe drive a truck with a broken gas line. Oh my god. So when you pumped gas into it, gas would just spill all over the gas station. Oh my god. What the fuck, man? It was not a very long I it was a very short-lived job. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. I wonder why. But anyway, Shannon Tweed, sorry. Back to the dream sequence. So so they're fucking in uh Yeah, she gets the shit slashed out of her. Yeah. 
the kid drinks the fucking poison milk cocktail and Shannon Tweed gets it on the fucking back by this rat. Yeah. And I guess that's enough to wake him out of this fucking stupor. Yeah, and directly after that, the fucking rat jumps in the tub with him and he freaks out. <laughs> hey, you know, the rat just, you know, it hates his guts, but it was like, hey, let's have a little fun before we kill each other. Yeah, split splash, taking a bath, let's do it. <laughs> he just has like a hammock in his bedroom now and he jumps into that and he's fucking sleeping in it. Yeah, that came out of nowhere. I was like, wait, what, what is going on there? He jumps into the hammock and then passes out again. Yeah, well, he's again, he's got that sleep deprivation and I guess the rat is like, fuck you, I can't get to you, huh? He goes up in the uh, <laughs> the ceiling and like makes a little hole so he can like watch him, I guess. Yeah. Also, I, I okay, here's the thing about the hammock, like, it, it's like that, okay, you've created now an, uh, an even worse scenario because if that thing just starts chewing at the top of it, you're, you're just going to knock you over. I honestly think, like what we were talking about earlier, this rat is just like too fucking smart because I think, I mean, they must have just for, either didn't film this part or they just assumed you'd figure it out, but I think the rat is literally up there just dropping ceiling dust on this guy so he can't get a good night's sleep. <laughs> yeah, probably fucking with him. Because the next scene when he wakes up, he has like the covers over his head and there's all this dust goes flying. Yeah. <laughs> the rat's like, oh, a fucking hammock, huh? Oh, I fucking... So oh, you fucking <laughs> here, have some fucking sheetrock, you fuck. Yeah, try sleeping now, you piece of shit. <laughs> we briefly cut back to his job, and the the CEO is like, "Oh yeah, tell our uh, Bert, uh, you know, the the media's gonna be pushed back for two weeks, so he's got two more weeks." And she's like, "Great." So she leaves work, the secretary, just to go tell him, and she's, like, banging on the door. She runs all the way to his house. Yeah, sure does. The cleats out there working on a ladder. She's like, Bert, you got two more weeks. And he's like, go, leave us alone, go away. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> but she's very clearly talking to the rat, but she doesn't know that, and she's like, oh, man, we had that kiss, and it was meant nothing. Yeah. <laughs> P.S., all the plants are dead in the house. I thought that was a nice, I thought that was a nice touch. Yeah, because yeah, he just is not paying attention to that at all. His wife's already going to kill him when she gets home. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, like, the movie the movie reminds us that Cleet still exists because he's just outside on a ladder doing seemingly nothing. He's spying on that girl with the nice legs, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take this chance to just be an E real quick and just enter this man's fucking house. I wonder, I wonder if uh, what her legs look like. Eh, I'll look at him later. <laughs> yeah, so he goes into this, like, side entrance to... to Peter Weller's house. He lets himself in. Just walks right the fuck in. And Peter Weller is in his basement making his uh, bloody boy bat. Yeah. <laughs> his Devin's ghost bat. He is in there making Lucille's cousin, all right? like <laughs> Yeah, Mick Foley is, is dripping wet. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I made that weapon and upgraded it in Dead Island at least three times. Sure. <laughs> this thing has nails in it, parts of the trap. Uh, yeah, this scene's fucking hilarious because Cleek comes in, sees Peter Weller, like, building this with, like, nails and, like Joe just said, parts of traps fucking stuck into it, drilled into it. And uh, Peter Weller's like, uh-huh. Uh, all right, yeah. What, what did John Candy do in uh, Cool Runnings? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. 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 <laughs> to the fucking table. <laughs> he just shakes his head. And just quietly walks back out the door. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, I'm so disappointed in you. And then just leaves. I think he's a little worried for his safety. Oh, yeah, totally. Well, he sure doesn't do anything about it. I, I do want to say this bat um is awesome, and I wish I saw it in a different movie. Yeah. <laughs> so so Peter Weller gets all in his fucking virtual reality megabyte rat fighter number one regalia. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, his rat protection gear. Yeah, need I say more? He's he's dressed like he's auditioning for the fucking baseball furies, like. <laughs> Dude, and he, if this house wasn't already fucked up, he just goes like, you know, let me let me ratchet that up to 11. Fuck it. Dude, he goes fucking ham on everything. Like, he... let me make let me make sure that she comes home to do, to a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> I remodeled this whole house from the floor up. I'm going to destroy it from the floor up. Yeah. <laughs> I, I created Hulkamania. I'm going to kill it. <laughs> the first thing he does is break that water pipe and the entire basement floods. Yeah. I was looking for Harry and Marv. Yeah. The wet bandits fucking strike again. I, he's just such an idiot. <laughs> Dude, he chases this rat from the fucking basement upstairs. He's fucking up his walls. He's fucking up the ceiling. The rat's not getting hit once. By the way, I'm I'm expecting this to build up to like an explosion for some reason in my mind. Like I'm like, oh, it's gonna cut the gas line and right. I had to say at this point, like I was expecting with the nightmares, expecting like the big reveal. Now I'm expecting even more. I'm expecting someone to walk in and he's just attacking the air. 
Like, nothing. Yeah. I'm expecting this to end in a man having a psychotic break because, like, I don't know, maybe the corporate world is too demanding. Maybe just the, the stress of, you know, the, 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 of, of the, you know, the caretaker, blah, 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 the breadwinner, whatever. It's this movie trying to say fucking anything at all. No! But no, it's just a man <laughs> attacking a fucking overgrown rat in his basement. <laughs> I kind of love it. <laughs> Because he just trashes his fucking house trying to kill this thing. Destroys the piano, steps on it and shit. The piano goes. Then he finally, you know, we finally make our way back down to the boiler room. And there's got to be like half a foot of water on the ground by now. Yeah. I just want to make an addendum to the MDU here, specifically the Daniel Stern uh, lore. Because at this point, he's battling the chuds. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. But, oh, yeah. In 83, sure. In New York City, across town. <laughs> so my thought is there is obviously some kind of access to the underneath Peter Weller's house. And I feel like that's where he gets the, like, maybe he's, like, running past it, like, trying to escape the chuds. And he fig and he's, like, sees it flooded. And he's like, that's a, that's a great idea. So then when he finally teams up with, with fucking Harry. Right. That's his calling card. Yeah. The Wet Bandits. Yeah, no, I, you know, he was probably, like, one of the people that came in there to, like, help fix it up after the fact. Because it was such a shit show. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, and then he gets on that fucking submarine or, or that underwater fucking, uh, uh, science, uh, lab with uh, Peter Weller. Uh, well, yeah, maybe. He hooks up with Ernie Hudson, yeah. We'll fit that puzzle piece possibly next season. That's that's the one that ties everything together, I feel like. Okay. I mean, we already tied it together pretty damn well between Bushwhacked and Chud and Home Alone, <laughs> but let's keep connecting it. <laughs> sure. I, I want to believe that as Daniel Stern is, you know, running down this, this block that, like, Everywhere he goes, staying alive with the Bee Gees is playing behind him. So like, yeah, <laughs> shoving a snowball in his mouth. The POV is like from outside of like Weller's window, and like staying alive just fades into the fucking scene, and he's running by like, <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> that, yeah, it's his theme music. Um, but yeah, uh, he he gets down to the basement and he's looking for the rat, and it just like comes at him from behind, and it just like bites the shit out of his head for like a minute straight. Yeah, it's final battle time, but like, yeah, it bites the shit out of him, and then like retreats and to the dollhouse. Yeah. And I thought this was kind of neat because it was like, okay, well, the rat has destroyed the actual house and, like, this dude's sanity or whatever. And then they have, like, this visual uh, thing where he's destroying his house again in the shape of, like, a dollhouse. And you think, like, I did expect more, right? Yeah, yeah he just, <laughs> just bludgeons it. He literally just breaks this fucking house and then ends up hitting it with the bat and then just fucking mushes it into nothing. I think the rat just said, you know what? It's not fucking worth it. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting, like, I, I, I couldn't believe there wasn't, like, an explosion or, like, or like the cops hear a noise complaint and they come in and shoot him right before he kills the rat. Yeah. Right. Like, like the omen or something. Like, I was expecting something. Instead, he's like, ah, I finally hit it in the head. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not a crazy person anymore. All right. <laughs> what the fuck? It does exist. I mean, you know, when he went to work the next day, he, you know, even though he's behind on this project, he's got to ask his boss, like, yeah, you know... I, I really need, like, either uh, an advance or, or a raise or something because I just totally demolished my fucking house. <laughs> I'm going to get right back to work on that fucking pyramid project, so uh, I'm going to need the money. He goes right upstairs and just pulls his papers out and starts writing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all better now. Yeah. He's, like covering, he's still covering rat guts and, like, wounds, and, like, he just hasn't changed his clothes. <laughs> And the whole fucking house is trash, and he's just, like, focusing on his work. I would love if the last scene was just, like, him in the office, and he's got, like, the rat skull on, like, a necklace. Like, a badge of honor. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> or, or it's taxidermied in his office. <laughs> like, oh, that's a little weird. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and everyone's, like, outside of his office, like, do you know what he's been doing the past month or so? Because he's been real hush-hush about it. <laughs> It's weird he chose to put a rat on display. Like, usually people do deer or something. Huh. He walks upstairs and, like, I, I guess, I don't know what the joke here is, but he, like, just knocks a fucking vase, like, off. Hey, man, his wife always, you know, she said she loved that thing and he fucking hated it. And he figured, hey, <laughs> the house is already destroyed. It might as well just ruin this now before she gets home and... <laughs> that, you know, can see that it was uh, intact. Yeah. Perfect opportunity to fucking break this thing. Yeah. <laughs> so she does get home with the kid. Again, it seems like everything's fine. Like, he comes out, he kisses his wife, he kisses his kid. He's like, oh, I missed you so much. This is great. I'm so glad you're home. They walk inside, and she just calm and coolly goes, geez, what, what happened in here? And he's like, oh, I had a party. Credits. And then it... <laughs> <laughs> I was fully expecting, uh, Kevin! Yeah. 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 <laughs> I could not believe 
that that's how this fucking movie ended. Yeah, it just ends. I stood up and was like just wordlessly just pointing my arms at the screen of my fucking computer, essentially commanding the movie to come back and give me an ending because it didn't. Yeah. The only thing I can surmise is that like, again, like her her folks are so fucking rich that like she even says in the beginning, she's like, why don't you just have daddy pay for it? What the fuck are you doing? Why are you doing all of this shit? And, like, it's to a point where it's like, yeah, I fucked up everything, but I, I'll just have your father pay for it. It's not a big deal. You know what I mean? Like, they don't even have to do anything. Yeah. Also, it's like they go into the house. It's like, all right, well, you guys can't, like, shower shit anymore because you broke all the plumbing. Or go anywhere. <laughs> also, there's there's a there's a bludgeoned, bloody, uh, uh, saturated <laughs> carcass of a mutated rodent in the basement. <laughs> For multiple times this, like, week, the, the thing's been flooded. You got mold somewhere. Like, get out of that house. Oh, oh yeah. Dude, yeah. There's there's also no food. There's only booze and water. Yeah. Well, maybe no booze anymore, but... Yeah. You got to drink the water from the fucking broken pipe. <laughs> Peter, put that milk down. You don't want to know what's in there. <laughs> it still has the cat blood in it. It's fine. A little strawberry. Hmm. <laughs> so, uh, so where are we putting this, fellas? In the fucking dumpster. Holy shit, I hated this fucking movie. Ah! Uh... <laughs> look, look, Joe, I appreciate that you like this movie, and I love Peter <laughs> Weller's performance, but I, wh while watching it, I'm like, oh, wow, I would like this performance in, like, a different movie. You know what? I would love to see a Moby Dick with Peter Weller based off this. <laughs> that sounds wonderful. <laughs> it wouldn't, not, wouldn't be bad. That being said, in right into the trash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here's the thing. This movie commits the cardinal sin for me, which is that for most of its runtime, I was so fucking bored, I wanted to pull my eyeballs out slowly. Like, I I could not stand the meandering this movie does at some points. Like, the first half an hour is Peter Weller just wandering around contemplating whether or not he wants to put that fucking suicide pistol up his nose. And then uh, the rat stuff was never tense for me. Uh, the only tense part was, like we said, in that nightmare sequence where his, like, moron of a kid is just, like, about to kill himself. Yeah. Otherwise, I thought this movie was banal and pointless and utterly without weight or mostly, or, or what I would discern as a plot. <laughs> I kind of felt like it wasted my time at some points, and I want to throw this movie into a fucking garbage bin violently. <laughs> into the dump into the movie dumpster? I hated this movie. Yeah, you're saying this is a dumpster movie, I guess is what you're trying to say, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I wish it leaned more into, like, the dark comedy. Like, they could have made this, like, a fun, like, black comedy, but they didn't. They took it so seriously, and it just... Watch Mouse Hunt. Just watch Mouse Hunt. <laughs> oh my god, I gotta revisit it. I've been, I've been thinking about it. Nobody dies in this movie, by the way. Not one person dies in this thing. <laughs> um, this is shelf for me, and there's a there's a multitude of reasons why. I think Peter Weller is on his fucking A game in this, and like you had just said, like he's amazing in this film. Uh, his charisma's on point and everything, and even the script. You know, you mentioned the black comedy thing, and I think it like it is a black comedy, especially if you really listen to what he's saying. It's kind of subtle, but he's always like, yeah, groovy, man, or whatever. He's like saying all this funny shit. If that's the case, only he knew he was in a black comedy and <laughs> everyone else <laughs> involved was not clued in. By the way, you know what? Now, you know what? I would love to see this as like a uh, stage play. Okay. <laughs> It's like a one-man show of just Peter Weller, like, running around a set of an apartment. And you never see the map. Like, that That would be pretty good. I feel like you could do something with this idea. I just don't think the movie pulled it off. There's not even a rap proper puppet. Like, it's just Peter Weller trashing a stage for 90 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I really I really like the cinematography in this movie. Um, I think it's really fun. Again, like, this gets bonus points for me because there's a little fucking monster running around the whole movie. And... And really, he's the only one who sees it anyway, so maybe it's not there anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we've been surmising, you know what I mean? Because, like, nobody, he doesn't tell anybody about it, and nobody actually fucking sees it, you know? Okay, but then you present yourself with a Teddy paradox, where, like, there's nowhere else in the movie that would imply this rat is fictional, just like in uh, The Pit, there's nowhere else in the movie that implies the teddy bear is haunted. Wait, 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 wait what are you talking about? Ursa Kingdom? Remember? <laughs> Well, I'm saying, like, he could have easily, like, fucked up those traps himself, you know what I mean? And, like, showed it to the dude and be like, how do I get rid of this shit? Or whatever. And then he just becomes obsessed with the fact that, like, because he told him it's a rat and he, there can't be any rats in the house and it's so perfect. And he slowly starts to go mad because, like, he's got the stress from his wife. He's got the stress with, like, wanting to fuck his secretary or question mark. 
and like the stress from work and having to do this crazy job in this small amount of time and all this kind of stuff. So like there is a descent into his madness and maybe the rat is the metaphor for that. Um, maybe the, maybe that's just way too deep. Uh, I'm going too deep with him, yeah. and maybe it's just the sim- the the simplicity of this rat taking over his fucking house that he's worked so hard to put together. But uh, I- I'm into it. Like, it's a shelf movie for me for sure. I think everybody's on their fucking a game as far as acting goes in this flick, and I like the idea of the rat like overtaking the house and like him slowly going insane from all the from all of his personal shit happening to him, plus having to deal with this fucking thing fucking up his house that he worked so hard to build. <laughs> yeah, I. <sighs> It's a dumpster movie. Come on. <laughs> I, listen, I, it's it's weird, though, because, like, I kind of agree with, like, some of what you're saying, Joe. Like, I actually think the cinematography is actually really good in this movie. It's slick. It's It looks great. Um, there's We didn't mention it, but there's one shot in particular that I thought was, like, phenomenally done uh, where uh, he's, like, sleeping in one room and the camera does, like, a 360 pan and it, like, somehow, without breaking the frame... Uh, goes into a different room and he's in a different bed and it's like I, I I don't know how the fuck they did it but it looked cool. It's really cool. And all the POV shots of the rat are really well done. Yeah. Yeah. Also, just just to add, just I just want to cap that off with the fact that like this movie reminds me of like a shitty pulpy uh horror story like something you'd get like sure like deep within the pages of like a stephen king like anthology or something. Oh, okay. Hang on. I'll I'll add that if this movie was forty five minutes long. And was a much more abridged, like, version of this idea. And it was in an anthology. I might like it a lot more. But the fact that it's 90 minutes was just brutal to me. Yeah, I think I could have dug this as a short. For sure, I get you. Yeah. But, yeah, and Peter Weller's great in this. Especially for his first fucking, you know, starring role. That's pretty incredible. But those are the only uh, redeeming factors in my mind. Like, I, I like the idea of... The rat, you know, man versus, you know, uh, beast, if you will. Um, you know, I, I don't hate this, but, you know, I don't like it that much. And like Tony said, I probably don't ever need to see it again. I didn't, I, the last time I saw it again was 12, you know, 10 or 12 years ago. I think I'm good for the next, you know, 90. <laughs> It's, uh, you know, it's probably realistically, like, middle of the dumpster, you know, around those, uh, you know, pickles and uh, egg rolls that Peter Weller's fucking throwing off the bed into the dumpster. <laughs> and uh, that's where it lays, next to a bunch of other shit that's probably, I probably actually think highly of in comparison to this, but it's, you know, it's all in that same uh, middle tier of the dumpster. It's, uh, you know, you can stick your arm in there and pull it out if you really want to, but you probably... Don't want to. <laughs> I mean, in fact, if you did, you might get your fucking fingers bitten off by a rat who's eating the pickles and egg egg rolls. So, I mean... And then gets pulled in by a bigger rat? Exactly. Or, or a cat that's coming out of another cat. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so so uh, yeah, Tony. Thanks for so much for coming back on the show. And uh, where where can everybody uh, find your videos and your podcasts and stuff? Uh, yeah, you can go to YouTube, uh, hack the movies. I put a video version of the Godzilla podcast on there. Castzilla versus the Pod Monster. I think there's actually a show called the Godzilla Podcast. I don't want to confuse people. Uh, but if you want to listen to the podcast, go to castzilla.com. That's casts with an S. Because they didn't have Castzilla available, so I had to settle for castzilla.com. <laughs> and that'll take you to the Libsyn page. You can download it pretty much anywhere except for Google because I couldn't figure out how to do that. Uh, yeah, and uh, check out Talking About Tapes every Monday. I don't know when this comes out, but as of right now, next Monday is Joe's episode. So uh, Frankenstein Unbound, it's a good one. I already made the thumbnail, and I sent you the uh, PNG I made. Oh, it's fantastic! I can uh, I can't. I don't want to spoil it because it's so good. Oh man! <laughs> yeah, I can't fucking wait. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then like Twitter, Instagram, just hack the movies. You'll you'll find me. Google hack the movies. Uh, skip everything that's Reddit related, and then you'll find me. <laughs> uh, if, you, if you Google hack the movies, don't filter out Reddit. You're gonna find a lot of things. <laughs> 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 and also stay tuned we got we got a fit okay so this is going to be our like regular episode for this month we're not taking a break per se but we're kind of we're kind of making a special thanksgiving episode for you guys Ooh. um and we're also recording that commentary track patreon gets two 
uh, things this month. We're we're gonna we're gonna bust out that uh, that commentary track for the Legend of Gatorface, and we're doing a, an exclusive uh, Patreon mini episode, um, which you will be able to find uh, out what that is on any of our social medias, and you can follow us at Movie Dumpster on any of your uh, social media. Uh, places wherever you get that stuff yeah twitter instagram facebook yeah and yeah and what about that patreon sean i, I mean do we want to just talk about that episode briefly um uh, so for thanksgiving we're doing march of the wooden soldiers so look out for that and it'll be a it'll that's kind of our little mini event thing for the month um in addition to this episode and then we're doing um the frank and turkey episode of bone chillers which was like a uh, a goosebumps in the 90s that was like a, yeah so that's going to be a mini sode exclusive to the Patreon. So you're going to want to go sign up for that to get the Frank and Turkey episode and the Legend of Gator Face commentary track. And we uh, may even have some additional Frankenstein Unbound content coming towards you at some point with C.B. Smith. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, you know, it's funny. I joked about how I'm never going to watch Of Unknown Origin again. And since I did that uh, Frankenstein Unbound episode with you, Joe, I think I've watched it like 15 times going to sleep every night. I'm like, well... <laughs> I'm tired. I need something to help me go to sleep. Oh, he's throw Frankenstein. Up. <laughs> it's on YouTube, by the way. There's actually a really good DVD transfer on YouTube. Is it really? Yeah. It's just for, there's a lot of Roger Corbin movies. All right, I, I, maybe I can explain this here because uh, I told Joe about this. We for a while I was trying to hunt down who owned Carnosaur. Yes, and I found out who owned it, and it's Roger Corbin's daughter. But I don't think she knows what she owns because <laughs> Carnosaur and Frankenstein on there's a lot of Roger Corman movies that are just on YouTube for free. I don't think she knows what she owns and I don't think she knows how content ID works or anything. <laughs> Corman sold or whoever like Cor- Corman sold a lot of it to Shout Factory. Yeah. But then he gave some to his daughter and some to someone. I don't know if his kids know exactly what they have. So there's a lot of movies just on YouTube and Frankenstein on is on YouTube. <laughs> So does that mean we can make Carna 4? Uh, no, they, I mean, you still have to license the property from her. Um, and I don't have enough funding yet. Can we do that, like, Stephen King thing? Like, the, the for a buck or whatever? What are they fucking called? <laughs> I, I forget. The dollar babies? That's what it is. Yeah, can we give her a dollar and be like, all right, we're going to make this, and if you like it, like, you know, sell it to you. <laughs> I'll have to go into the specific... I never emailed her back after she gave me the price. <laughs> Because I went to the person who was going to fund it, and they went, no. And I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> there's the end of that. <laughs> uh, well, hopefully that gets revived, because I, I would love to fucking work on that so bad. I would love to, too. <laughs> Tony, you also have a Patreon? I do. I do. And I feel bad, because I thought I was uh, subscribed to your Patreon, and I totally am not. But I will change that. You son of a bitch. Yes, I've been uh, kind of slacking a little bit, just because my channel ended up getting pretty popular out of nowhere uh so i have to do a bunch of commentary tracks i've been doing behind the scenes stuff like um the whole time doing night of the uh, hack the living dead i was showing like behind the scenes photos and stuff yeah um yeah yeah. if you want to join that you can go to patreon i got a lot of merch and uh guys i mean if you're interested if there is an only fans there's a hack the movies only fans <laughs> I need I need some of that hack hack the movies only fans. And everyone always thinks I'm lying. And then they check the link and they're like, "Oh, you're not lying." <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, because I have no shame." You got to reel them in. Yeah, man, he told me some of the content on there. I don't want to spoil it, so go check it out. Yeah. Were we talking last week with uh Pissy how like there's a Pornhub account set up for totally non-porn related things? Yeah. Yes. We got to get on that. We got to get pornhub.com/moviedumps. Uh, we got to work on that. Is that how we're going to explode, right? That's how we're going to break th- off the plateau explode is a very apt term <laughs> port up's kind of annoying with that though because they'll if it's not porn related they won't push your shit wait a second they did a they did a publicity stunt with a bunch of gun youtubers were kicked off youtube Pornhub was like yeah come to our our site you can upload whatever and then like a few months later they quietly just got rid of all the gun youtubers so if i do like just a loop of of two people fucking and then just put the podcast over it and then upload that? Actually, you know what? That would probably be fine. <laughs> there you go. Joe, I think you've discovered a new kink. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> listen to Movie Dumpster while you're masturbating? Yeah, listen. Yeah, Movie Dumpster and sex. Oh, it sounds great <laughs> to me. Let's do it. Corpse fucker would be all on that, figuratively and literally. And cum dar. You know, watch out for that. <laughs> I think those are two people we don't want to put on film. <laughs>
I mean, I think they would be the two. It's either them or GVD, and who do you want to see fuck? Th that's like that's like our Brazzers porn stars, man. I'll uh, I'll quote uh, the movie Valkyrie and just say, I'll take a pistol. <laughs> okay. That's, that's also an option. <laughs> uh, but we always love to... Uh, Thank our listeners, and especially our Patreon supporters. We'd like to thank uh, Hunter Davenport, Brendan Lemune, The Autistic Gamer 89, Christopher, Jacob Chavez, Leonardo Roberto, Talavera Barocio. Texas Chainsaw Gorlami. <laughs> <laughs> um, Amanda Tweed, Joe Has a Mustache, Dustin Elkins, Nick Lowry, Dalton Bell, Sergio Murillo, Matt Collins, Tyler Monty, Lucio Fulci's butt. <laughs> every time, every time. <laughs> Julia Lockwood and Kyle McDonald. Thank you for being our patrons. Yeah, thank you guys so much. And also, thank you again for everybody who participated in the Trick or Trash uh, month last month. Uh, it was it was like seriously overwhelming how many people entered, and um, it's really awesome that you guys have been listening, and we just wanted to say thank you again for entering, and I hope you guys like all the, the prizes that we're going to be shipping out soon. Yes. So yeah, thanks for playing, thanks for listening, and uh, thank you for your continued support of the show. And you can always, uh, I'm going to steal the thunder from Joe this week. I, I, I probably, if you go back and listen to the episodes, I probably steal it from them half the time. But uh, you can you go for it. Yeah, you can always uh, <laughs> head over to those Apple uh, podcasts and give us a five star review. It really helps the show. Yeah, for no money at all. Isn't that nice? Yeah, you don't even ha not even for a cup of coffee. It's free. <laughs> you fucking scroll down Instagram for fifteen fucking minutes at a time. I think you could take two minutes to go and write a nice uh, little blurb for us, little review. Yeah. Well, if you write and if you write the review, we'll always uh, repost it and uh, we'll try to shout you out. As a thanks. Yeah, for sure. Did I write a review? I feel like I wrote a review once. Uh, I mean, if you did, you have to let us know what the username is, because it did not say Tony from Hack the Movies. Okay. I'll have to figure out. I, I feel like I, or maybe I meant to write a review and thought of something funny and then never got around to it, but I will now. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll read it. Yeah, we will. <laughs> and repost it. Whenever, whenever I give reviews for like friends things, I will, I'm always like super dramatic. It was, it's always like... Oh, man, I was standing on a bridge, and I was about to kill myself. And then I download this, and it really changed my life. It saved my life. <laughs> <laughs> Movie Dumpster saved your life, huh? Yeah. <laughs> There's a t-shirt idea for you. So that's it. That's Of Unknown Origin from 1983, directed by George P. Cosmatos. Hey, everybody, if you want some more bad movie goodness, you can check us out at moviedumpsterpodcast.com. Subscribe to us anywhere you listen to your podcast, and make sure to leave us a five-star review if you dig the show, because it helps us get out of the bottom of the dumpster and into more eardrums. Yeah, and if you're on the social medias, you can follow us at Movie Dumpster on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. I'm Connor McGraw. And I'm Tony from Act the Movies. Thanks for visiting the dumpster. Come here, come here. See that little dog with that lady? That's Mrs. DeNovi, apartment 305. Look at those legs, huh? Best legs in the building. She cut herself shaving again. You know what's the matter with you? You don't realize that maybe you're spending 20% uh, of your time thinking about him. But he's spending 100% of his time figuring out ways of how to outsmart you. Because he's a rat. He's got nothing better to do. Do you want a pair? 